and welcome back to MD Global Muscle here at the Onrise Media Studio with me, your host, Giles Thomas. And we're joined all the way from, I think, Portugal, Hafiz Sedali, husband of the new Portugal pro female bodybuilding champ, Anastasia Leonova. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I can, I can relax now. Um, Anastasia, uh, now you're, I believe you're, you're, you're Anastasia's husband and you're going to translate because her English is not so good. Yes, I will translate. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, just want to say congratulations. You must be absolutely so happy. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She really happy and she really enjoyed this moment. Thank oh, you guys. Fantastic. So um, now... I mean, was this? Just, can you give us some contest history of Anastasia? Because, like I said, we've, I've seen her on yeah, the. I've seen photos, but the, we need to know, need more. We need to know more. Okay. Hmm. First of all, I want to tell you, thank you very much for this opportunity to all your followers, to all who are watching this in YouTube, this program. We're happy to be here. And Anastasia, she is my wife, and she is my athlete. What I can say, we just turned from amateurs, two thousand nine. Wow. 2009, yes, 2019, 2019, sorry. She returned the pro mm -hmm. after we winning the world championship in another federation. We took the overall championship. Mm -hmm. And then after six months, we become a FBB pro, you know? Yeah. So after six months, we just want to compete. And then this happened, the pandemia situation. You remember? Of course, I remember. <laughs> I'm <And> still in it. <laughs> I told to everyone before that we're competing, uh -huh. that we're going to bring new standards, new standards for female bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. you, you, you see today is a lot of champions, a lot of champions, but all of them have some weak points. Yep. And my wife, she didn't have the weak points. This is why I call her the total package. You can saw the video. You can saw the posing. You can mm -hmm. see the immunity that we're bringing and incredible muscle mm -hmm. maturity, with yep. muscle size. So, well, here we are. I mean, as soon because I watched the live stream, and as soon as I saw her hit that front double bicep, I just thought, I just thought she reminds me like a female Lee Priest. Just everything, yes. everything is there. Just the, the calves, the the. the front to back i mean she's very very complete so um so yeah so this was obviously a pro debut then yeah this is, was the pro debut and uh, that what we're working on you know mm. we didn't work on some like in other people working you know you got the big shoulders so you're working to impress people or shoulders or legs no we're working on body to bring body without the weakness you know mm. like you told about Lipriest. My my wife got you know amazing genetic moment. Why I talking about this? Just imagine we become a world champion in amateur federation without using gear. Just wow. imagine. Wow. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. I I talking about this openly because yeah. in my twenty three years of experience, I never saw that. You know. Yeah. You didn't know my name in your. In your in your side, in US side people. But in my country, I made a lot of champions. I was myself champion, you know. Okay. Uh, I'm a consideration. So I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So I mean, how long have you how long have you two been together and how long have you do are you a tra do you do take care of her training, her prep? Uh, what 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 do you take care of in terms of her a total kind of um approach to bodybuilding? Oh, about Anastasia, I just want to explain more. Okay. She started with the bicycle before that, before, before, BMX, before. BMX, BMX racing. racing. You know what is BMX racing? Yeah, yeah. He's jumping, he's <laughs> driving. Okay. Yes, he was the, the uh, Russian champion. Wow. In, yes. <laughs> but then she going to arm wrestling and also become a champion in arm wrestling. Wow. After, just amazing. <laughs> After that, in what? powerlifting, and also become a champion, and all of this shit will happen without the Jews, you know. Wow, no OJ. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> and then I meet my wife in the gym. Yeah, she was in this moment competing, but in category of the body fitness category. Okay. When I saw that lady first time in my gym, yeah, I saw her and I asked it. What you do? How you look like that? What competition you going? 
what you using? You know, yeah, like yeah. always people asking, what, what <laughs> jet are you using? Yeah, yeah. So she told me, nothing. I say, what do you mean nothing? Nothing? Nothing. Supplements, nothing. She said, yes, I not have money and no have opportunity for this. My wife growing without parents. It's true story, like, a, you know, like history, like a rocky story. Yeah. But not in movie, you know, we're not fake. We are true yeah. without not nothing. We're training in Moscow. It's very cold country. It's not like in US, you know, California Beach. They smiling close <laughs> to a yard and driving <laughs> like, you know. No, no, no. Yeah. So we training her gym when we training where we training. Yeah. It's under the dog. We not have candid candidatial. We not have nothing there. Only only you know how he weights yeah. lifting yeah this is team for power lifters and we we training there for bodybuilding contest and look at what we bring in i feel i feel like there's a movie we could make out of this i feel like i feel yeah, like you should play you should play your own so parts story. you could we should make this like a, a documentary you, or a movie this is why i want to be you first who yeah. start talking about this wow. because it's an amazing story yeah so parents died when she was little girl, she's father, first of all, you know, go to the, to, no, he, he was sick and he died. After this, she's mother. So she was alone, growing alone. No sponsors, no nothing, just training, straight eating and what we bring it for, you know. It's true history, my friend. Wow. So, I mean... You know who is Chris Mines? Chris Mines? One yeah. of this uh, promoter, Chris Mines, Legion oh, Chris, Sport Festival. He's just actually liked a post I just put on your on your Instagram. Yes. He just liked it, a post I wrote on your Instagram about 10 so minutes ago. Chris him, Mines. You can ask him when we, we win his, the pro card in her, on, of his competition. When he bring his... Ah, uh, World the Russia, Russia. In Russia. Yeah, 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 yeah. My yeah. wife, we took the first place there. And I told him, next year you will see us on Olympia and see him. <laughs> You got the potential. I said, just looking, just looking. We yeah. will, we will do it. And so, look at that. So you've just won, and you beat Margita Zamalova, who is very. She's done multiple Olympias. She's won pro shows in women's physique and female bodybuilding. You know, so she, uh, Anastasia beat some very, very good ladies in a very, very tough contest. So I mean, how how does she feel now going to the Olympia in just twelve weeks now? Как ты чувствуешь себя перед Олимпией за двенадцать недель? Что ты чувствуешь? И готовы показать лучший результат среди лучших участниц. Никого не боимся. Только so, вперед. I translate. Uh, okay. She very excited. She very happy to have opportunity mm. to show what we can bring, and we not afraid from nothing athletes. <laughs> she no need to speak English to be the best. We speaking international language, and international language is bodybuilding. Yeah. We look at the body. Yeah. We don't need to speak. So, what was that like when you won? What was it? What was it like? Just as soon as you came off stage, how did you feel? Where did you go last night? What's it been like in the last twenty? Well, tw yeah. sixteen hours. Sixteen yeah. hours. What's your yeah. message? So, I didn't want to sleep because there was so much energy но хотелось идти гулять, но в Португалии все закрывается очень рано, и мы пришли домой, и вот на этих эмоциях э, сидели радостно и не могли поверить, но мы к этому шли. You know, she's talking about it was very emotional. Yeah. It was very, very uh, happy for us because also my family from another country, from Israel, coming to here. Yeah. And after the winning, we just want to go and celebrate somewhere to see, it, you know, in restaurant. But here in Portugal, yep. everything was closed. Everything shut. No. Shit, you know. <laughs> so we we just oh. you know, we just have a lot of emotion. <laughs> yeah, we just want to buy some ice cream and we yeah. can't buy nothing. So we continue in diet. We back to home. You know, we back to home. Oh, you home now? Home already? Bread. You are home already in Russia? Yeah, my home already in Moscow. We original from Russia. So when did when did you fly home today or? Uh, no, we back to home maybe after five days, four days because we want to make here, you know, the photo session, oh, sorry, some so, video stuff. Sorry, so, so we I, can do it here. hang on, you're still in Portugal now. 
yeah, yeah, we will still. Oh, okay, keep. so you're going to stay a few days, do some photo shoots, and then you yes, go back, yes. and then you start your Miss Olympia for prep. Yeah. Wow. So you see, we was very emotional, and we want to celebrate, but we could because everything was closed. So oh, no. yes, well, it I... was an emotional day. I... Just look at that. She won a show. Oh, room. beautiful. Oh, wow. Callie will be happy. He likes yeah. to get the medals out. Look at that. Yeah. She can eat her chicken and rice off that. <laughs> beautiful look at first place wow. oh so that so that that circular thing is like a plaque that it goes onto right the medal oh i see i see that's nice that's beautiful beautiful, beautiful. very beautiful medals very beautiful people here in portugal you know yeah i will they was very excited for us uh, you saw the presentation their posing routine yeah beautiful yeah you the like bang, bang 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 yeah, bang bang, you <laughs> shut me down. Yeah. And you know what? what where is we took okay. this pro, uh, this routine up? Tell From me. where we took the Tell how me. I said it. Mm, you know, uh, who give us this moment to understand this is great posing, great posing routine. You know, mm. it was Bob Perry's nineteen ninety eight posing routine. Just check in YouTube after we finish. Conversation. Which, what, what, yes, no, what, what year? 1988. 1998. 1998. Yes, yes Bob Perry's posing was in he Sweden. Sweden. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So that's where you got the idea. That's where you got the inspiration for the posing was, music. You know, inspired, inspired by yeah, the yeah. by by the Bob Perry's. Wow. <laughs> So, so I, I I have to translate what she talking. She said Good. spoke about you. You was the true fan. She talking about me. From ten years old, my friend, I dreaming to be in Olympia. From ten years old. Yeah. Look at now, twenty three years old. After we going to Olympia. Yeah. When I coming to the gym, I was ten years old and I was sick child boy in Uzbekistan. And I told to everyone. One day you will see me on Olympia stage. I will be great bodybuilder. Everyone smiling. Mm. But look at me now. We sit here and yeah. we're smiling together. <laughs> oh, that's a wonderful story. It's just so nice to see that support that you've given you know, you've given each other and you've, you've, you've realized that dream now. You've won your pro debut. And thing is, like now that the Miss Olympia is back as well, that makes it even... Also, I'll tell you, are, are you giving any thought to the Rising Phoenix? You know, we have problem with Rising Phoenix. Why? I just want to tell you. Okay. The Rising Phoenix and correct Alina Popa. It's correct Alina Popa. Okay, yeah. We start contacting internet after we want to be the pros. You know, after, after we want to debut, we start connecting. Yeah. And you know, when we connecting in our, in our mentality, we respect people. I live respect. You know, if you, you respect me, I will respect you back. So I write to Alina, you know, you great athletes and we want to be part of your wings of stage. We, are, we have our experience and we have Iron Queens. It's our team. Okay. Let's make something great together. But she write my name and using little words, you know, write my name with little words. So when I see this, I, I ask her, why are you using little words? Why, why you not respect me? So she answered me, your wife need to put more 10 kilograms to to have a chance to compete with my my athletes so i told her listen me good you on stage 72 kilograms and you 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 hike hmm. around 167 centimeters hmm. my wife 66 kilograms and hike 152 centimeters. Wow, okay, so this okay. little girl now. This is what I asked this lady. Okay. And she didn't answer me. Oh. This is why I call Kualina. Come on, answer me. Who is little girl now? <laughs> Who is little girl? Okay. Pro debut winner. She spent 16 years to be second in Olympia. Hmm. We will win Olympia. You will see it soon in pro debut. We win at the first place and we go to Olympia. Hmm. What's going on? Wow. You know? So so you're gonna go straight to the Olympia then? Sorry. So this is what my I have wife talking. She is young, 
Ten facts. You saw my ten facts. Hang on. How, how, how old is how old is Anastasia? Sorry to interrupt. Sorry. Seven. Just turned twenty-seven. Twenty-seven years old. Oh wow! Because wow. I mean, some of the yes, the best, some of the some no listen. No have sucking. Have you know, no sucking skin. Yeah, no yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. No implants. I know. I know. I know. I can see. We can see it for ourselves. She won the show. You know. This She's... is the new standard. And if somebody talking about original female bodybuilding queen. She is still here, and I am king of my world. You see, <laughs> oh, I love it, love it, love it. I love it. I love, it. I love the energy. I tell you what, it's really adding a really exciting element to the Miss Olympia because you know you got the the existing champion Andrea Shaw, you know, and some of the other ladies have been around for a while, you know. So it's really exciting to see new faces. We like to see that. We like to see pro ladies like Anastasia winning their pro debut. It's very, it adds a lot of excitement to the Olympia. It's got a great storyline, and you've got a great backstory. So, um, wow. So, so you go home in a few days and then you get, you're just going to get your head down and get ready for the Olympia. Yeah, we will start it, our preparation. Maybe we will prepare you. Maybe you will see us soon on Europa because this Europa also give us new competition. Mm -hmm. You know, I told to, to Wings of Strange ladies, I just want to leave the message. <laughs> Okay. They just too lucky that they living in US because <laughs> if we going to US, we can compete every week and beat all of them. <laughs> all of them. Okay. No matter what competition, Andre Show, <laughs> no Andre Show. I not coach someone who be great champion. No, I coach someone who will be the greatest of all the time wow, in female okay. okay. You just will see. Okay, okay. Well, you're off to a fantastic start. Thank you. <laughs> As a pro. As a pro. Wow. Okay. Well, I wanted to get you on because obviously it was sensational, you know, because you were messaging me last week and I said, okay, let's let's get her on. And then when she won, I was like, wow, that's fantastic news. So yeah, I'm really happy and really happy. Like I said, we've been I've been watching you for a while and um and uh, yeah, it's um it's like I said, when anyone wins their pro debut, I mean that's impressive. You know, it really nobody that's the... doing this. Nobody in Russia did in this. Aksana Grishna, oh, okay. great champion. Yeah, yeah. But she she competed around seven years in Pro Liga to get her first Pro win. That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. That's good. Well, well not Mishina, not nothing. Hafiz, she's got you in this a corner. She's 27 years old. She's obviously got unbelievable genetics and incredible work ethic. I mean, arm wrestling, yeah. BMX, powerlifting. I mean, what else is she going to be? The champion, powerlifting champion, <laughs> arm wrestling champion. <laughs> Women's physique champion, bodybuilding champion, and we did first place, first place, first place. You know, wow. streaks of third place. So who would be? I will show you pictures. You ha will see it. Hafiz, oh. who would beat who in an arm wrestle right now? You or your wife? <laughs> uh, my wife, easily. <laughs> what about easily. probably a BMX? I'm guessing as well. <laughs> easily, I didn't need to fight. If someone gangster with want attack me, you know, I just can call to my wife. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, this was um, this was a nice surprise. It's a nice surprise. You know, it's uh, it's always great to connect with new people in the industry. And I think I think you're gonna I think you're gonna love the Olympia as well because, you know, it's uh, it was such a great Olympia last year. The Miss Olympia is back, and female bodybuilding has got that love back. You know that that they're getting the yes. respect back. They're back on the big stage. And it's, um, yeah, and like I said, you want, Anastasia won a very, not just any show, but she won a very good show with very good competitors. And she won it quite clearly as well. So it's looking good, mate. It's looking good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right, then, Thank Anastasia, uh, Leonova, and Hafiz yes. said, Hafiz said Ali. <laughs> I will, uh, I will, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll follow the, the next kind of three months very, very closely, and I wish you all the very best. And just enjoy the next couple of days out in Portugal. Go get some great photo shoots, get some great food, and then have a little bit of time for yourself as a couple, and then go home and then smash it, and then go and take uh, Orlando by storm. <laughs> Be in the touch, my friend. Nice <laughs> to meet you. We Thank want to wish to you all the best. For all your followers and all who are going to see this interview in, in, in YouTube, just believe in yourself and never give up. This well, is our principle. I think respect you're, I think you're yourself, living proof. You, you're living by that, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. All right, then, Hafiz. Uh, thank you, Anastasia. Congratulations. Thank and thank you so much for coming on MD Globe Mosul. It was absolutely you, it was wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. All right, then. Thank God you. Bless you. Be in the touch. Bye-bye.
and welcome back to MD Globe Muscle here at the On The Rise Media Studio with me, your host, Charles Thomas. And we're joined all the way from sunny Portugal, Vlad Suhorotko. Hi, guys. Vlad, how are you doing, mate? How is everything? Right now, this uh, outside, uh, we eat now. Yeah. We are now still in Portugal. Tomorrow we'll fly, uh, we'll fly back. To Ukraine and uh, start make my routine oh, again. Ma- right, so I know you've only got twelve percent battery on your phone, so we're gonna if it, if it cuts out, we'll just have to work with that. But um, yeah, I watched the live stream, mate, and um, I'll be honest. I mean, I had a couple of glasses of wine, so I was getting very lively. But um, I was, oh mate, I was just, I was screaming for you and Presty to be one and two. Yeah. Yeah, about, uh, you know, about shape, uh, I told you when we spoke with you last time, mm-hmm. uh, I told you what uh, I will bring to stage so different. This will uh, be a new, uh, like, uh, new size, yep. new, uh, new quality and, uh, like, new, new pack stage. And uh, everyone told me about, like, uh, this, this uh, so big difference. And um, what I can say, you see everything yesterday. I mean, honestly, because the way they were, they were, that I was watching, I was watching the live stream here on this screen and I was watching it on the laptop because it was more stretched out. And I was I was watching both. I was really paying And I was looking at the way they were moving you around. And I was thinking, OK, as we as I predicted, as many people predicted, because even Mauro Sassi, uh, Andrea's uh, coach, he says, I think uh, the... The big Ukrainian, the Ukrainian, he says, I think that will be Andrea's biggest threat. And the way they were moving you around, Tim Budesheim looked great. Everyone looked great. But I just thought, this has to be one and two, surely. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I spoke also with uh, with Mauro this before competition. Uh, I talked with him and uh, we talked uh, after competition with him also. And uh, uh, many people will not understand how this uh, how this been and what... Uh, uh, What's going on the stage, stage, and uh, but we have what we have. Yeah, what well, I can say. I've, I've got to be honest, mate. Though you actually delivered on what exactly what you said you were going to bring. You were bigger. Your conditioning was at your, especially your legs. I mean, like you and Presti, like the conditioning could not have been any better. So how much heavier? So you took second in Romania Pro last year. How much heavier were you this than for for this event? Not heavy. Really? Minus one kilogram. Wow! <laughs> shit! Oh my god! Yeah, and your waistline was you so about, tight. About yes, uh, about we focus it, we focus it about make, like not bring all size because yeah, uh, for this is not important. Your your must make your uh, like uh, not dominate muscle group like. Uh, I don't want to say like weak weak point, weak muscles mm. because it's not be my weak uh, weak muscles uh, before, but uh, uh, we make good job with mm. the back with legs, and uh, I think you saw no one not have bigger legs and uh, for this uh, front from <laughs> uh, uh, backside uh, yeah. bigger than me uh, and uh, about quality same. That's why we like uh, we we make uh, this job. We planning like uh, make this plan mm-hmm. and uh, about weight. You see this this I get bigger, but uh, uh, weight is uh, smaller than minus one kilogram. I I honestly, what does Ahmed Askar, your coach, think from uh, Oxygen Gym? What does he think now? Uh, Better, better ask him. Okay. Ask him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. He also, he also. Uh, I can say he have a little bit shock. Yeah. Because of everyone, uh, I think everyone have this like uh, who uh, who saw this because when uh, when uh, when being awards and we stay on stage. Uh, you know, I'm preparing uh, not for this. Yeah, not yeah. for this. Oh. It's like uh, it's like you know this uh, put uh, cold water to your head, like <laughs> like to stay like this. Yeah. But uh, anyway, what I can say, like uh, uh, judges think like this, but uh, 
what my job, my business, it's uh, bring to stage best stage and other things. It's not it's not my business. Yeah. What I can say, I I mean I, I personally we we make. I mean personally, we make I different I, plans. Yeah, I mean, personally, yeah, yeah. I had I had you, Tim, and Andrea as the top three. I had William Martins actually in fifth, even though he looked fantastic. I thought his back was a little bit lacking, but I didn't have him top three. I had Theo in fourth, but um, so I mean, I know it was time short now. So what's the because thing is, you've got a good amount of points from second second in Romania. You've took fourth place here. What's the plan next? Are you please tell me you're going to do another show in 2021? Of course. Yes. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yes, fantastic. If some, if someone think what I am uh, will be said after, and uh, I will think how to make different or something like this, no way. Yes. I will compete. I will compete. I will make best. I will bring. I promise. <laughs> I promise to myself. I promise yeah. to everyone. I bring to stage uh, this back, uh, better than this, than this backstage. And uh, you know, if I promise something. I I make it, mm. and uh, we will see. I'm I'm so hungry to compete. I'm so hungry to win. I'm uh, I don't want to say big words, you know. I just mm. uh, come and I just show yeah. nothing more. Well, you you got a lot of people talking, mate. I mean, it's uh, a lot of people have been talking about you, and it's and thing is, um, are you gonna have you thought about your next show? Are you is it Spain you're gonna do or? I'm guessing. We will decide. Oh, will come on. Decide. Give me, give me, give me. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Because, um... A little bit, little bit. Uh, I put a little bit in treat, you know? Okay, like, okay, okay. And also, mate, also, I've got to say it before you go. I think, I think you need to work on your posing, mate. I think that cost you. Uh, what, what, posing? Your posing cost you, I think. I think it cost you a placing. I think that cost you at least one, one maybe even two placings. I'll be honest with you now. I think if you look at Presti... Have a look at, like, say, Dorian in the in the 90s and the Olympias. Have a look at Rami when he won the Olympia last year. I think you need to slow your posing down. I think you need to, because I think you were very excited and the adrenaline was there and you were hitting too many variations of the same pose. I think you just need to pick your pose and, and pose a little, because it shows confidence, you know? I think just slow your posing down and I'm telling you, let people see your conditioning because you weren't holding your poses and you were kind of, you're doing too many variations. And I think if you slow it down, I think then the judges will get a really much better look at your physique. Yeah, uh, I can't say uh, like I not uh, I not agree with you. Mm. Yes, I am agree with you, and I, I know uh, I know what I must more yeah. practice. I practice uh, my posing uh, many times. Like uh, always, I make when I have preparation. It's three times per day. Yeah. Uh, this. Uh, I make this, and uh, but uh, this is really this what you what you say. This is correct. Yeah, slow it down. I, slow it down, mate. Just slow it. Have a look at what Rami did. He was the first in the pose. He'd hold the pose, and then he would just he looked effortless. I think you just need to slow it down because, like, as soon as you're hitting the pose, I, I was really looking closely at the detail in your physique, and then you were already moving on to your next pose. I was like, just slow it down, you know. Show show those judges what you got, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Go in Spain. <laughs> I, I can't. I, I, I can't say no. I can't say no. Oh come on! Yeah. I, well, okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll leave you on that one, mate, because it's your news to tell and when you want to release that. But um, but mate, honestly, because I know, I know you're gonna have to go because your battery's gonna go. But um, mate, honestly, you look absolutely fantastic. I think you delivered. You did exactly what you said you were going to do all along, and um, very proud of you, mate. I just, I was really, it was really exciting when you came out, and I, I, was, I was watching it with my girlfriend Lauren, and I said, "You watch." I said, "Watch out for Vlad and Presti." I said, "When these two come out, I said they're gonna, I think they're gonna be the, the front runners." I said, and "Another guy you gotta watch out is for Tim," but I said, "I think that'll be the top three. And you did, you absolutely, because your conditioning, you lit. That was, it could not have been any better. So you did your job. Thank you. Thank you. Really, we will see. I will. Uh, I will make like my. Uh, we will. Um, we will found mm. like my mistake about uh, about posing. Mm -hmm. About we will uh, make like uh, more good. 
put more work for this, yeah. for this point, and uh, about shape. Mm -hmm. Also, I can say like, uh, like I'm motivated. I'm hungry. Uh, Good. Hungry. Mate, you're, to show you're, tw more. you're twenty. You've just turned twenty-five years old, and there's there's a pretty good chance that you're going to be at the Olympia this year. I mean, just to even just, I think I think you'll make it. I, I believe you'll be on that stage. And I want to see you next to Nick Walker, mate. I've got to be honest. <laughs> I want to see Vlad versus Nick at the Olympia 2021, October 7th to 10th. I will make my best. You know, this is, yeah. this is pretty important. And uh, with my, uh, this, this, uh, this goal, what give me uh, my coach, Oscar, mm -hmm. first right now. All people from team must qualificate to Olympia 2021. Yes. This uh, Ashkanani, Ashkanani have qualification. This uh, Nathan, uh, yep. Ruli. Uh, this, this just I I I told now about uh, uh, about my coach who coaching uh, this Oscar uh, coaching this guy. Yep. And also me. Yeah, you'll do it, mate. I do. Honestly, I believe that. I really believe that. I think you just, I think, um, like I said, I was, I, was very, I was really happy with what you brought. I wasn't happy with the placing. I don't think you deserve fourth. I think I had you either second or third, the, the third at the absolute worst. But at the end of the day, mate, you're moving forward and that's the main thing. So, mate, I'm going to let you get your lunch because I know your battery's about to go dead and, and you can relax and enjoy the, your day in Portugal and then you can get back home and get prepping for hopefully Spain. <laughs> I not I say right only one thing, like uh, I not have idea qualification with points to Olympia. Yeah, because if you qualification with point to with points to Olympia, it's showing you your level or what? Or if you want, uh, if you want, I don't want now like uh, say something to another guys or another competitors, but. If you really want to compete in Olympia, if you want to show your level, mm -hmm. if you want to show who are you, you must get directly qualification to Olympia. Okay. Because, because for what you are, uh, you come for uh, to Olympia for statistics or for what, or just to stay and uh, if I, you go to Olympia, Vlad, you must uh, you must make your best. I I disagree, mate. I think I think you're 25. I think if you can get to the Olympia this year, as long as you get that stage, the judges don't care whether you've got there on points or a win. You'll be a factor, mate. You will have a lot of eyes on you and it'll be very good for you. I mean, just it's the fact that you're this good, so young, is so impressive. And yes, I do think you're, quali you're, 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 um, you're capable of getting through to the Olympia on a win. But you know what? Either way, as long as we get to see you at the Olympia, I think you're going to just, I think you're going to love it. And I think it's going to be a really... It's going to be a very, very successful year with you. We obviously started last year when you got second Romania to Regan Grimes. But, mate, honestly, just just keep working, slow that posing down, and I guarantee we'll see you at the Olympia in, in, uh, in October. Exactly. I, hope. <laughs> I can say I will make everything for you and I will fight for this uh, till I not get a qualification. Yeah. All right, then, mate. Right, I'll let you get your lunch and... Um, I'll be watching, mate, watching your progress and uh, just stay in touch and I'll speak to you very soon. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, Vlad. Thank you so much. Okay. All right then, Bye. mate. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Can we move on to the next topic? Um, if you could give anyone from any era an Olympia title that you felt deserved one, who would that be and why? Let's go to you first, John. Uh, you're talking about in that contest or just the physique itself? Just, uh, just anyone that you think, if you, if you, if you could give that seventeenth person an Olympia title that you feel was m most deserving out of the ones that didn't win, who would it be and why? Samir, do you know anyone? Or probably. You know okay, sorry. Probably Flex Wheeler because I think Wheeler. Flex Wheeler had an incredible peak. He just couldn't hit his peak at the Olympia every year. But if you look at how he looked at some of those Arnold Classics, yes, his physique. Amazing, and I think uh, here we are. You know what? Thirty years later, is it twenty, thirty years later, mm -hmm. and we're still talking about Flex Wheeler as this fantastic, one of the greatest physiques of all time. So yeah, I, he just got beat by guys who were better than him on that day. Mm -hmm. Whether it was Dorian, or it was uh, Ronnie, Samir. 
Yeah, <clears throat> I would say Flex Wheeler uh, had the body and it was imminent that he would be Mr. Olympia. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, sometimes you got to be patient. You got to be patient, take your time, and you're going to do it right. So it's not like me. I started in Olympia. I came in 18th place, was Ken Waller, we're last. Mm -hmm. And I trained my ass off. I dieted hard, and everybody accused me. Samir wasn't training hard. Samir wasn't eating, dieting, and I was diet, I was doing the opposite. Uh, the thing is, everybody saw me that day and said, wow, this guy have a great genetic. If he put it together, he's going to win. Hmm. So I was disappointed. I came home, and I said, you know what? I need to find exactly what worked. 81, I jumped into like seventh or ninth place. I was still determined. I said, I know once I find out what I need, mm -hmm. I'll do it. The, the reason I'm saying that, I'm going to compare flex to my situation. Yeah. So, you know, it took me three years. 1980, I was almost last. Wow. You did what Brandon yeah. Curry did. <laughs> but honestly, <laughs> honestly, my body was capable even of winning then. But I didn't do my homework properly. I didn't do, I worked hard, but I didn't do things right. I miscalculated. Yeah. And I tried too hard, according to Frank Zane. Frank Zane said, Samir, you tried too hard. And he was right. Yeah. And so, you you know, what I'm saying, if Flex missed his first Olympia, uh, you know, it was, like you said, you know, Coleman was extremely ready. And it wasn't. I mean, he would have had to wait a little bit longer. He should have fought the war, with, continued to fight that war with quality. Hmm. Is jumping into the mass quickly and uh, thinking that's the only way to do it, I think it did backfire. Otherwise, yes, Flex Wheeler would have 100% be Mr. Olympia, in my opinion, had he waited a year or two. Hmm. Another guy who I think really worthy of an Olympia, and the reason I say that, Sean Ray. Yeah, I knew you were going to say Sean Ray. I, say I knew you were going to say Sean Ray. Well, Sean, yeah, he looked beautiful. good from the front. He looked good from the side. He looked good from the back, and he doesn't do any boneheaded shot. He doesn't do stuff, stupid stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he comes in pretty ready. Sure. So, I mean, with all due respect to uh, Do Dorian, who I think great. But, you know, I mean, if you really match upper body with lower body on Sean, he's really right up there, you know. Not to say, you know, okay, Dorian always won with his hardness. Dorian come in ready and gnarly looking. But they overlooked Sean Ray, man. Sean Ray had the chest. He had the quality, great mm -hmm. arms, great from the side, great ab. He was, he, I think he's probably uh, him and Flex Wheeler, and then followed by probably, uh, I would say, uh, Kevin oh, Lavron a couple of times. He was really right there. Yeah. But that's about it. Those those three. And then, you know, let's, let's not forget, Labrada. Mm. Yeah. Labrada had the body, and I thought Labrada was this close in Rimini. Do, yeah, do, he was. Samir, yeah. Samir, do you not you think know. he was closer in 1990 in Chicago at the drug tested when Lee Haney came in a bit smaller and softer? What do you think? Do you think he was closer in 1989 yeah, I, in Rimini? No, he looked actually better that year, but oh, in okay. Rimini, he, he was not as hard, but he still close. In my opinion, <laughs> I mean, you know me, uh, I don't really like, you see, Lee Haney is one of my favorite people in the whole world. I mm. would not say anything negative. But Lee wasn't really looking awesome in Rimini. He was fine. He but was heavy, thought, right? Right, Samir? He was big. big. He was big, but he was a little bit off. He wasn't really, because I saw him all the time when he was winning. Yeah. You know, Lee Haney, he overwhelmed the competition with his huge shoulder-to-waist ratio. Yeah. And, you know, some of the judges, they don't look at these technicality. Like, you know, look at Sean. He looks good from the side, round chest. Good, you know, I don't know. I, I think I think Sean Ray was a bad boy. He talked too much, and they want his <laughs> ass. <laughs> <laughs> he did pretty well. He got some seconds. He, he's outspoken, and he complained about certain things, but I don't blame him. But he got, he got the, quite a few second places. So, yeah, yeah. For, too. For yeah, him. but... but I could see Sean to be Mr. Olympia too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, especially in uh, '94. I think, you know, they always say you got to knock out the champ. I think he did knock out the champ in '94 because that was the year yeah. that Dorian showed up with the torn bicep. His tan well, was off. He was a little was, heavy. This, he, he this, was a little off. And Sean this, was 
perfect that year. You see, this is this. Thank you for saying that. This is what really can I say? That's what pisses me off about bodybuilding. Okay, Dorian Yates, the great Dorian Yates. He comes into the show with torn biceps, and it's clearly visible. And when Sean Ray hit a double bicep, they come in bulging, tight waist. Come mm. on, guys. Be fair. <laughs> you know, be right. fair. I don't care. You know, Sean Ray win, Labrada win, uh, Dorian Ace win. But that day, honestly, Dorian was off. In my, from my perspective, yeah. I have a lot of can, respect for Dorian. Can, can so I, guys like... Yeah, I, I do too. I mean, anybody can be off on any day, though. I mean, it's, it's hard for a guy to win five, six, seven in a row without mm. one year being off. Yeah, and, you know, what's interesting, Giles, is uh, I think now in this age of social media, you notice if you look at the Mr. Olympia now, we've had three Mr. Olympias over the last three years. Yeah, they're not. A, the judges aren't afraid now to give it to someone else. Yeah. If the current Mr. Olympia, the reigning Mr. Olympia is off. Yeah. The judges today will take it away from them. Yeah. We're back in Dorian's day, Lee Haney's day. Mm -hmm. They didn't do that. They they let that reign go. And if that guy was off. That isn't did. that strange? Isn't that weird? Yeah. Good thing let, say they that. let it go. You know, they'll let, yeah. if, if, you know, Lee was off a couple times or one time at least in Rumini, uh, Dorian was off a couple times and they just, uh, he's the champ. You know, they say you got to knock out the champ. Could, could but ask, they don't do that anymore. Could I ask one quick question when you're talking about Lee Haney? Do you think Lee Haney would have won in Helsinki in 92 if he'd have done it? Uh, Depends on the condition he was going to come in with. Yeah, I, I mean, know. It's uh, just hey. Haney is overwhelming. I mean, I've seen comparison with Haney versus Yates, and really Haney was wider, with a better fee. And so I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, Dorian, in the first three years was incredible, and then later started having injury and stuff. And he was like, I, I mean, Dorian is probably he's the hardest working athlete out there. But he really was beyond tunnel vision. Mm. And he comes in rock hard. But then the injury, I mean, guys like, hey, guys like Labrada, guys like uh, Sean Ray, you got to respect those guys. You know, if you keep that attitude of Max Truck is better than Austin Martin, you are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you have to recognize that the Austin, Art, you know, Austin Martin is a beautiful car. Yeah. yeah. It's not like I'm going to pick up the Hummer. Yeah. What's, what's, what's wrong with these people? And this is why I think it's important to really keep changing judges and mm. put more qualified judges. Yeah. You know, someone like me, and I don't give a crap who wins, and I'm going to give the right decision to the right man. Mm. I think I think he would have, Giles. I think Haney would have beat him that year because Dorian wasn't the mass monster that he later became the next year in 93. Yes, of course. So in 92... He might have been like a couple pounds heavier, and he was in great condition physically. Uh, I think Lee had him beat on the chest-to-width ratio, like Samir said. You know, he had that smaller waist. But uh, Dorian had the better legs, so. Mm. It oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. You know, Dorian, he comes in gnarly. You see, most of the – Dorian win the competition when he turned to the back. Yeah. I yeah. recall in Chicago, Nasser all somebody, rest in peace, versus Dorian Yates. And you know what I said? I said, Nasser won the front. Yeah. Dorian killed him from the back. Yep. So yep. it was, I said, we need to take Sando and split it in a half. <laughs> <laughs> split it up. I, I honestly felt it could have gone either way. Like they didn't give, they didn't give yeah. uh, Nasser his whatever. But <laughs> I mean, come on, Dorian had a torn biceps mm. in there. And I was there, I was in the first row watching. Yeah. I'm sitting next to Rodolfo Panata. I was like watching him, like, you know. It's just not. Sometimes I don't know what they're thinking, man. It's, okay, guys. Who cares the, who won? The, the next question is: Who is the most underrated bodybuilder of all time, John? Underrated bodybuilder. Wow, there's a lot of those. Yep. Uh, Give me the first one that pops into your head. Terry Pastel. Oh God. yes, yes, Terry He's Pastel. Great, oh my God. Great bodybuilder, just shorter, you know. Mm -hmm. so, uh, He'd have been a good two twelve. Oh God, yeah, yeah, it's been amazing. I don't so, know. Take you're one. talking as a pro or just any? Yeah, uh, pro, pro. yeah, anyone. Hmm, that's a tough question. You mean uh, he deserved more uh, uh, 
you know, uh, more respect or should have been more famous or what? From overlooked. Over, yeah, yeah, like yeah overlooked. 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 Yeah, better. I, you know, when when Eduardo Kawak came in from the Naba to the IFBB, yeah, I think he was overlooked. And I think they did. They have something. I mean, he actually deserved like three, four places higher in all those competitions. I don't know why they held him down. Yeah. Let me let me call Wayne Demilia and ask him. <laughs> Wayne, <laughs> what is this with these guys, man? You know, this what bothered me. Is some official, some wimp official that never lifted weight. They give decision to guys like you and John. Hmm. And honestly, you, you, the only one. The only one of the officials that I really, really dig is Jim Mannion. Yeah. I'm not just kissing ass. I don't care. But I'm saying he was a hardcore bodybuilder. Mm-hmm. He trained hard. And, he, you know, he was a fair judge. I I, I witnessed Mannion giving me terrible placing because I deserve to have the terrible placing. Mm-hmm. And he gave me first place when I deserve it. And I remain good buddy with him. But he was fair. I got another good one, Giles. Come on, John. Mustafa Mustafa Muhammad. Oh, fantastic answers. Incredible. He never got placed on. Do you know, John, I saw him at the 2003 British Grand Prix, and he was third in that. Uh, Ernie Taylor was second. Jay Cutler was first. And I think people were shocked when he got third. Yeah. uh, Because actually he looked better than Jay Cutler at that show. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I remember the pictures from that. He had the legs. He had the abs. Unbelievable. arms. Yeah. Great physique. Did, did, yeah. you, did you see when he, um, he he approached Arnold when he wasn't happy with his placing at the Arnold? Yeah. And that was Arnold the last ever show right. he ever did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Funnily enough, he disappeared after move. that. Yeah. Okay, then. Okay. Um, yeah, Mustafa, Mustafa was muscular. He came in. Incredible. He, he came visiting me about seven, eight years ago mm-hmm. or more. Maybe close to eight, eight, somewhat about eight years ago. And then... Mustafa had some issue, health issue, mm-hmm. where he had end up having kidney transplant. Oh, God. oh, he did. I wow. Didn't know that. Yeah, and but when I saw him that day, he was very, very impressive, very massive. Yeah. But you know, for me, you know, sometimes you you go all out, you end up hurting yourself. You know, he could should have been patient. That's the same thing what we talk about, like uh, Flex Wheeler. Good of impatient. You, know, yeah. you can't go crazy. Let your body rest. Don't exert too much. Your body telling you take a break, take a break, and come back. You know. Turtle Fox in his day, too, was amazing. You know, back in the oh late 70s. God. But when he was over in Nava, and I remember everybody, like, talking about, man, what, he's going to win the Olympia. He's going to win the Olympia. And then when he finally came over, he didn't look quite as good i don't think except for the year you beat him samir in 83 he looked oh amazing. it was it was scary that day yeah. i mean i looked at him backstage <laughs> berto fox is the densest bodybuilder i have ever seen dense density thickness yeah. yeah i mean i was like backstage it's i felt like in the same situation like as arnold versus sergio in essen yes. yeah 72 and, and you know yeah. arnold told me he said yeah. samir I swear to God, I walked backstage <laughs> and I saw Sergio Oliva and I said, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Samir, I swear, I couldn't believe that I would beat this guy. Yeah. And so the same situation with me when I saw Berto, I said, holy cow. He's like muscle <laughs> on top of muscle. Thick. Uh, so but thick. here we come back to the posing who showed it better. Yeah. Right. I was I was a hair hard, sharper than Berto. And he, he could have been a little bit sharper in the middle. So anyhow, uh, yeah, Berto Fox was a freak of nature. And I think his fifth place was unfair. I think he definitely belonged in the top three that year. Yeah. Okay. S- Samir. You know, that's from my opinion. Samir, one thing I've always wanted to ask the guys in the 80s, what tan did he use back then? What did he use for tanning products? Do you want me to tell you my secret? Come on, tell me a secret. <laughs> <coughs> Bill Pearl... When I met Bill Pearl, yeah. and I came to Southern California, and Bill, he said, son, you're going to have a great future. I like your skin tone. You have a nice, natural color, you know. It's like, And so, you know, I was like doing certain things. For a while, I used Dioderm. You remember the Dioderm? Dioderm, yep. Mm-hmm. But I already have the good base tan. But in Germany, I did something very different. I was tan. 
And then I used the solarium for like maybe two, three days. Yeah. And then I didn't do it five days before the show because, you know, when you overheat the skin, if you burn your skin, you end up holding water in your skin, whether you like it or not. And so what, anyhow, I, I got Clinique for men, the Clinique for men. Wow. A Clinique, I put it, I mean, with such a quality work. Yeah. It was so perfect. So I had my color was different than anybody else that day. Yeah. This is the good thing. When you have, right now, they airbrush everybody. Yeah. So they all look like this bottle of avocado oil. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And so oh. what, I, what I'm telling some of my guys, I said, you know what? I want your color to be like this, <laughs> like the apple cider vinegar. Yeah. Because this color is going to stand out. Look at John. He's the... <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Giles, you're laughing. I just like you had because your props ready. That I'm, was great. I'm, I'm, sitting, I'm sitting in my kitchen. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> but you're the thing ready. is, when you have 10 people, they're all like brown, like my kitchen closet. Yeah. And then come in, it was a little bit of golden color. You're going to stand out. Mm. And so, I don't know. I, I did that with the Clinique, and my color was a little different. If you look at the shade, and Frank Zane, he does a good job. He was like red oh, and gold. Yeah. Tom Plath does a good job. Yeah. His color comes out alive when he goes on stage. And so, yeah. I learned from these guys. Come on, we all learn from each other. It but does, the idea, it, right? It, they may not remember, you know, the guys today don't know this, but back in, like, if you go back to the early 80s, I remember going in teenage shows, and my poor brother, had, he took this big sponge, and we took the bottle of Dioderm, and he'd just go like <laughs> this, you know, to get the get it on the sponge, <laughs> yeah. and he'd have to paint me. So we'd do, like, two coats Thursday night, two coats Friday morning, oh, two wow. coats Friday night. Oh, I mean, it took hours. hours. Stay in the ass. He's Stay in the ass. every part of you. <laughs> yeah. Now it's like these guys got it so easy today; they have no idea. So, what what did you guys <laughs> use to get rid of water? Did you use any like dandelion or vitamin C, or was you stop your water the night before? What did you do, both of you? Well, when I was back in the '80s, competing in the you know the local state level shows, yeah, we would all everybody from my gym. I trained at a hardcore gym. We would all dehydrate Thursday, Friday, Saturday. No, no water at all. None. None. And it was just like common practice. That's what everybody did, you know. So I don't remember anybody using diuretics back then. Yeah. We would just all be great. I remember after the show was over, you were just dying of thirst. That's the only thing you want to do is drink. Yeah. Samir? Water is very simple. Very simple to get rid of. But there's two kinds of water. There's hormonal-related fluid, which is caused by stress, that actually elevate your uh what do we call it, uh, aldosterone level, yeah. mm -hmm. your cortisol level. And so really then no diuretic would work. Diuretic cannot work on cortisol and aldosterone. Diuretic won't work. So, you know, it's a complicated issue, but if you really relax and unwind and just cut your sodium only 48 hours before, mm -hmm. and you can drink. And I, I think we all know that the glycemic index play a role with, a, you know, the insulin reaction to the type of food we eat could cause fluid retention also. So you have to know how to eat the final few days and, you know, calm down, relax. At the very worst case scenario, if you have a sodium-related fluid, you can piss it off so quickly. I mean, yeah. any light, lightweight, lightweight diuretic, if you need to, will do the job. Any lightweight. You, I'm not in favor of taking diuretic, I'll be honest with you, because like in the 80, I was a waterlogged. I didn't have fat on me, but I looked fat because I am so intense. I train like a madman. So my, my body was retaining water. Basically, my aldosterone level was sky high. Mm, right. And so I was going crazy from between 1980 81 and 82, I did my study and I found out exactly what I was. So that's why I came in 82. Boom. Hiroshima. Dry. Hiroshima. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, Hiroshima. you know, not, not bragging. I'm a very competitive person yeah. and I will not quit. Mm. But then I learned I had to study quite a bit 
about fluid and electrolyte management, and this topic is no problem. It's a piece of cake. All you got to do is stay calm. Yeah. I, I remember Joe Wheeler said, Samir, take a tablespoon of salt. I'm like, Joe, so <laughs> obviously <laughs> Joe Wheeler knew something because I cut sodium way too early in the past. And if you dehydrate too early, your levels are going to elevate. And so there will be like sodium potassium exchange because the body will do anything to protect you. And so that was an issue I studied very, very well. But water, man, it's so easy to deal with. Just calm down. <laughs> Keep your potassium intake up. Cut your sodium 48 hours did, before. You never you should be good to go. Did you ever use things like uh, Solgal, about UC Juniper, herbal water formulas, vitamin you C, could, uh, dandelion? Natural, di natural diuretic, you know, dandelion, yeah. asparagus. Asparagus, uh, yeah. You know, this kind of stuff would actually speed up the process. Even caffeine is diuretic. Okay. Okay. But you don't want to take the caffeine and get hyper, stay up all night posing like John does. Do, do you, no, no. <laughs> guys, guys, do you, know, do you know what I did once? I took um, I took a whole strip of these <laughs> these Aquaban tablets, and I didn't realize that they were full of caffeine. So the night before the show, I was hoping to dry out. And I didn't sleep a wink all night. <laughs> I almost lost to Ron Tufel, 1979 universe. Wow. Because I stayed up late. I was ripped. I'm like... I'm in good condition. If I go to sleep, I will look great. But, you know, back in the day, I didn't know better. I stay <laughs> up posing, excited. I'm going to get better. You cannot do a miracle. If you relax, go to sleep, you're going to look great. The more <laughs> up you stay, the more excited you are, the more hormonal reaction you're going to get. Right. And you're going to look like crap. Right. <laughs> so luckily, I was... Sharp. I was ripped enough, but I held a little bit of water. Mm. Ron Tufo was more ripped than me, but because I wasn't dry enough, because my fault. But fortunately, I had the physique, and I still have cut enough. I won because of that. Yeah, I was there. You should have won, Samir. Oh, you were there. Oh, thank wow. you. Okay. <laughs> I was there. Yeah. But 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 you know something? Because physically, I had him. But yeah, really, did, did in terms much. of quality and hardness, he was more ripped than me. Yeah, he was. He was in great shape. See, I, I, I'm fair. He's no longer with us, but the truth must be told. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. The, the next one. Who's the best bodybuilder writer of all time? The best bodybuilder of all time? Writer. Oh, writer. Yeah. Uh, Rick Wayne. Don't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you us know, what, why? You know, you know Rick, Rick, Rick and I have a very long history. I mean, I was one of his close friends, but I'm not going to elaborate too much what went on. Okay. You know, with Rick Wayne, you can tell him uh, something. If you must tell him off the record, or it's going to go in. It doesn't matter if it's embarrassing. What You know, sometimes you put things that, oh, to me, you have to tell me it's off the record. You can't say anything in front of the guy. Right away, it's like, and so I, you know, I think he's a good writer, of course. I don't like him now, but I used to love him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bill Reynolds. Yes. Yeah. Rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Bill Reynolds was my close friend. He's the editor of Muslim Fitness. This guy, he typed, I don't know how many, few hundred words, and it's like, it's like a machine. Yeah. He's a great writer, very intelligent guy. Rest in peace. And so, you know, but... Peter McGough was pretty good. Peter McGough, yeah. Very good. That's Jack it. Neary was another good one. Remember him, Samir? Jack don't Neary. mention Jack Neary. No. Oh, you don't like him either? <laughs> <laughs> and welcome back to MD Global Muscle here at the On The Rise Media Studio with me, your host, Giles Thomas. And we're joined all the way from, I think it's Italy, new Mr. Big Evolution Pro Open Champ, Andrea Presti, and his coach, Mauro Sassi. Hello. Hello. Everybody. Hello, hello, guys. Hello, Jim. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of smiles going on now. So, um, ha, guys, <laughs> guys, how are you feeling? First, to you, the champ, Andrea. Wow, uh, I'm feeling like a, uh, I don't believe it. For me, it's a, a, a real dream of the last uh, ten years of hard work every day, and uh, uh, I have uh, so 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 respect of. Uh, the word Olympia, that for me is a, is a only really a dream. Mm. And uh, now I don't believe it. I think that uh, 
uh, I need uh, two, three days to uh, <laughs> understand really that uh, what's happened. <laughs> yeah. Because now for me is uh, okay. Every five minutes I say I go to the Olympia, but really I go to the Olympia, yeah. really. <laughs> for no, really, uh, serious uh, for me, and uh, and uh, I'm sure for Mauro is a. Uh, I don't know. We leave bodybuilding real uh, in the different uh, way um, of uh, some other uh, bodybuilder. Is uh, really only hard work uh, in silence. Okay, social media. Okay, mm -hmm. commercial because uh, bodybuilding we live with uh, that. But uh, we believe really in the real work, and the Olympia is the dream. And uh, now we we are in the dream. So, so what's bigger for you, winning your first pro show or going to the Olympia? What's the because because you've mentioned the Olympia several times there. Well, uh, this show and my first pro show mm. when I arrived second. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. the goal or the, the, goal of, the of the first, first pro show, show uh, mm. was uh, coming in the top fifteen. Yeah. We told with Mauro, Mauro, I'm happy that uh, I arrived in the top 15. <laughs> and uh, when we arrived second, yeah. I, I don't I don't understand that uh, I was at the one point of Olympia. I'm second. I'm fucking incredible. I'm second. Wow. Yeah. Now is a different. Is I I said if I I said before is a dream, but now we have three years more of a professional competition three years more of hard work and uh, and we have uh, more consciousness but uh, for me it's incredible i don't know if uh, it's clear for the people but i don't believe it it's incredible <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> how do you feel maro because i know because i watched the live stream last night and it was i could see it was a very emotional moment you hugged on stage and i mean it was a really nice moment to see that kind of like because they zoomed right in your face under there and it was like you were like oh my god i've actually won it so what was it like maro what was that what was that like being there you know and and, and being with him every step of the way yes he said don't have words my voice uh, <coughs> is a little bit a little bit down but because that you know, the, we, we I cooperated a long time. You know me when you work with Miha. You, you know, and me and you a long time there. With Andrea, I started to work six years ago. When Andrea started very first show, like amateur, small shoulder, uh, not phenomenal genetic, not a random muscle, glute, a good gluteus and hamstring was the, the best part of Andrea. And then after six years, there finally we won their uh, one pro show. And you have a qualification. Is it like when you grow your baby? You know, you're, you're, <laughs> you're, your yeah. Baby. Yeah. Yeah. this is a like personally, but also Andrea is a lot believing me. And when we're talking about the bodybuilding, it's not a joke. Outside, you go to eat, we go to the pub, you go to eat sometimes, sometimes the pizza because Andrea prefers sushi. But when you're talking about bodybuilding, Andrea follow my eyes. Mm -hmm. This is not for my ego, but because he believed. And finally, after six years, the dream come true. This is a, for me, is a, I cry. Because for me, crying in the man is a good sensation. Women, men, sorry, men have a many sensation, emotion. And finally, I'm not uh, trying to say yesterday I cried for a long time. Wow. That's a good, uh, good emotion, a good result, both, both, yeah. both come. So, so where are you two now then? Because it's only, I mean, it's 3.30 in Italy now. Um, obviously, you yeah. competed last year. You, are you back home now? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm at home. I One landed uh, two hours ago. Okay, oh, wow. So you literally just got through the door, practically. Maro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just landed in Venice. When I sent you the message, that was two, one hour, two hours ago. Oh wow! First, I got you. Literally, got you fresh off the plane. So, what was it like the overall event? What? Because I saw the revolving stage, and uh, what was that like for you being on that stage and that level of production? Were, were you happy with how everything went? Okay, Tell you you talk, Andrea. Go go, Mauro. Go. No, no. The the question was are, are with Andrea. How is he feeling the stage, or what is the question? I don't just just the. Exactly. I mean, because it was a fantastic production. I mean, I watched, like I said, watched the live stream, the venue. What was it like overall as an experience? The whole trip in Portugal. Okay, that I I saw many show in my experience. Not only the coach, but like like a just normal. Uh, I'm a, a, a normal fan of bodybuilding, Las Vegas, uh, 
Newcastle, everywhere. <laughs> in, in, Castle, yeah. Like a uh, uh, super body power. Remember, Jal? No, yeah. time ago, there was perfect. The people have a tie. There was like a Mr. Universe, very important show in Portugal. For me, it was amazing location. You know, you see the athlete that come down with this and start to like around, like a statue pose. Mm. Light is perfect. Uh, song and and uh, everything for to do the best for the guys that make a diet in and have a good condition in Portugal was perfect in casino location. I'm talking about location for like a mm-hmm. normal public, not only a passion of bodybuilding. And yeah. I remember this stage because it's, uh, I competed in my last competition two years ago in uh, 2018. And uh, I have a good feeling because the stage is very incredible. Beautiful lights, uh, beautiful uh, choreography. But uh, I did uh, my worst uh, result, uh, ninth. <laughs> okay, so it's ex- <laughs> yeah. extra sweet that you came back and won. Yeah, and so this is a perfect weekend, perfect show, perfect, mm. uh, perfect place, perfect lights, uh, because my my characteristic is the extreme condition yeah. and uh, that light uh, is perfect for show the condition maybe color is perfect everything is perfect really is a perfect week- weekend mm-hmm. i'm really uh, not confused not uh, uh, shy i feel him okay my mind is uh, free i haven't uh, uh, I don't have some uh, um, fear. Oh no, maybe it's my return of the stage. Uh, I'm afraid of judges. I'm afraid of, of a lot of public. No, I don't feel nothing. Only good vibes. Mm. I feel good. I feel my muscle. Mauro, for me, Mauro is uh, the the truth. If Mauro told me, Andrea, you are okay. For me, it's okay. Mm. Mauro is my mirror. I don't see my body in the mirror. I, I see my body in the eyes of Mauro. And I think that there is a, our strength point. A lot of respect. Mauro for me is uh, the final judge. If Mauro say me, Andrea, you are okay. I'm okay. Mm. I'm confident. I feel good. I feel... Uh, um, I, I know that... Uh, the stage is, is possible that the stage is mine, but not mine in arrogant idea. Mine, I'm here and now I want to show the hard work that I did in the last six, seven, eight months. I feel so good, in, independent of the result. Maybe I can, I'd, I can uh, arrive the second, third, but I feel so good, really. Now, you look very good in Puerto Rico, but I think when I saw the hotel room pictures, you know, was it two hours before you went on stage? I reshared them to MD Globe Muscle and to MD, and I just went, holy shit. I said, this is the best Andrea Presti I've ever seen. So, what, Mauro, what adjustments did you make after Puerto Rico for uh, Andrea's physique? Nothing special because it was very easy planning because Andrea is still in condition like a three weeks before normally. And that for the problem on Andrea is our don't lose the water. Right. The, the bigger problem in the all normal bodybuilder, if you lose too much water, then you reducing your volume, the muscle, you don't have your muscle that push on the on the paper skin. Mm. But uh, it's a, like a, when uh, when it happened with the young Bailer and Patrick, we talked with Patrick two hours ago, he sent me the compliment. I was very happy. Nice. There, for the New York Pro, he don't touch nothing. No change the salt, no change the water. The body is okay, it's go ahead. Hmm. And the, finally, the different, uh, I think that in the Puerto Rico was the big stress a little bit with, for Andrea because he stepped on stage after two years. Yeah. And he have a, yeah. a, a lot of Italian people, oh, pressed in no legs, oh, pressed in no triceps. And then was, not good, confident. Okay, the social right in everybody. Everybody, they know nothing about bodybuilding. But that was positive with Andrea in the, his mind. Because, uh, you know, when you write the weak comment like, oh, he has small legs, oh, no triceps. In Italy, sometimes it's too much people talking. And finally, Andrea closed the mouth for many people in Italy, especially in in, uh, in Bahamas. In Bahamas, he first called out yes. 
Andrea is a fighter. Hmm. And then I have a knife on the mouth, and then, hey, man, I don't scare. I bigger respect with Shaban. I bigger respect with the uh, Akim. Bigger respect for Hassan. But finally, we're fighting for to do the best. Hmm. And this is most important, confident in the judge. I saw many shows, but what I see someday in the Portugal, the Jade judge is tortured. I don't know if you understand me. Comparison. Comparison. Yes, I, I watched it. Lots and lots and lots of comparisons. A lot around to Presti, okay. Shuluko, Vlad, uh, Kim, mm. and the Brazilian guys, William. A Presti stay in the center. I think the hit judge you want to see will be Presti first, or I want to put him down after comparison, comparison, comparison. Andrea Presti is a couple of dolls saying Serbian guys. Cap down. He still. No eyes, watch the judge and pose him and sweat a little bit. Mm. This is a must important for me. Show your body and then make illusion the judge. This is a mirror search that would tell me and uh, learn me. Do you know what? I, I'll be honest. In the lead up to Puerto Rico, I was looking at the progress pictures and I didn't see any big improvements. But when you stepped on stage, it was like I, I could, it was your physique. So most most bodybuilders they look great on Instagram and then you can see the improvements and you get on stage and you're like oh it's a bit of a letdown but you were the opposite I was like kind of I wasn't blown away by what I saw a few weeks before but when I saw the stage pitch especially the front of a bicep I was like my god you've I mean how much heavier were you than than in 2019 how much bigger uh, in the 220 2019 yep. I go on stage uh, one one two one one two and uh, in the morning of the Bahamas, uh, 117, 118, yes. six kilos. Six kilos. It looked, like, it looked like more. It looked like I, I would have said, yeah, I would have said about 10, 15, 10, 12 to 15 pounds. And it was, thing is, you had that same conditioning as well. And uh, with same conditioning. Yeah, mm. yeah. But uh, I, in my experience, I see that uh, there is a three type of athlete. Uh, the gym monster, the athlete that uh, you see in the gym, uh, the day before competition, and when you see him, you say, "Fuck, is he unbeatable?" Yeah, he's a he's a a lot of muscle shredded because maybe you see only shoulders, only arms, only the athlete that in gym don't uh, um, don't have a lot of um, size, big a lot of size, but on stage uh, it takes your attention because. Uh, like moving, like posing, because of proportion, and so there is a big, ma a big monster muscle, and on stage a monster like okay, Philip, <laughs> okay, yeah. and uh, I. Oh, sorry, lost him. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> He's back. Okay. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we got you. Good. Uh, okay, sorry. I think that uh, uh, I'm uh, for my genetics. I haven't uh, a big muscle. I have a long, uh, long arms, uh, long legs, uh, and uh, in photo or in video, I lose uh, the real uh, view of my body. Yeah. On stage, uh, so I keep my small waist, uh, I improve my arms, uh, I improve my legs. Uh, also, I had uh, three big injuries in the last two years. Really? I broke uh, two times my quads uh, and one time my hamstrings. Really? Yeah, I stopped uh, in... Like uh, six, four, 14 the months in two years to train wow, legs. Oh, okay. Hang, yeah. on, hang on, hang on. Say that again. Say that again. 14, Sorry? how many times? 14 months. For 14 months, you couldn't train legs? No. Wow, injuries. shit. Because you, you tore your quad. Why I, did, I can't even, I've not seen any tears. Where are they? Are they visible or they're not visible? It, can't be. No, because uh, I'm I'm not shy, but I prefer some 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 things. I prefer that uh, don't uh, go to the public. Okay, I have an injury. Yeah. My brain say, okay, Andrea, stop. You only think about uh, recovery, mm. and so I think that we we have a lot a big improvement, and with free injuries. That's incredible. Mara, I didn't know about this. 
Yeah, no, because uh, sometimes, you know, when you t- say I have an injury that you put hand on, I say, wow, uh, probably my uh, my condition, you know, when people say, I will be perfect the day of the show. No, you are already three weeks before, like Dorian. Yeah. Dorian, hey, t- you, are, you are already three weeks of the show. You go easy in the show. Because I don't want to do like a, a put on the social, oh, Andrea Presti injury, like, you know, put the hand in front and say, if I'm in case, Andrea, no, no. Andrea start to work. And honestly, because I don't have any secret, I say, Andrea, it's a 10 weeks out. It will be difficult to step on stage after two, week, two years. And then we'll be top, uh, top, top competitor because your legs, he tore an like, upper of quads during the squat in Smith machine. And then I say, Andrea, 10 weeks is a short time. But mm-hmm. Andrea, believe me, is a strong mind, probably because he's come to a uh, martial art. Okay. Um, it was judo, judoka, you know, you're judo, judo, yeah, judo. judo. And then probably they give a lot of discipline. He was like a frozen on the stage yesterday. I was impressed because comparison, comparison. Do, do you know, dry, drier. Mauro, do you know what? I was very impressed. Do you know what it reminded me of? How Rami did his posing at the Olympia. He kind of, a very, very slow, nice, confident transition. And you held your poses. You were just like, and it, and it looked effortless. It looked so easy, the way you you hit the poses. And I, I was really, like, you looked, you, you basically, like, it was a very confident, commanding presence you had on stage. Does that make sense? Yeah, example, we're talking about the, sh- the show yesterday. There, uh, some pose uh, team don't open the back in last spread. Mm. Because he said, you know, the pose is one second. The judge is... Because he during a little bit more. Vlad, Vlad did the same. Vlad did the same. He wasn't hitting his back shots. He wasn't. Let, he was getting his back out. He was. He was hitting too many poses. He was. He was kind of rushing it. Yeah, I talking with the Vlad example. He's a nice guy. So yeah, he, great guy. When you do like a mass muscular, his shoulder close too much. Yeah, shrugging as well. Shrugging with the upper. But yeah, the uh, the front lat yeah, spread. Yeah. Front uh, frontal bicep. He was shrugging up. I was like, no, come on. Vlad posing better than Romania, but sometimes this is a my experience there are. Bodybuilder need to, if I squeeze much muscle, looks bigger. No. If I close the shoulder, it looks completely different, asymmetric. Small mm. shoulder and big legs. Mm. The posing for me is the, basically, of course, condition, size, and bodybuilding is not only posing. You see, example, Theo. Theo is a confident. Yep. Well, he judges say, guys, you just pay, t- change this, the skin. You are be the future. Because what he show all his body in, in the easy movement. And also Andrea, Andrea Presti, there was good, good fight. He liked me yesterday. Depend if I come four place, five place. Mm-hmm. Any time he's, he's mentioning two years ago, he was nine place, Hule Vaga ten. I was happy. Yeah. It's not, not your time, Andrea. Yeah. You know, judges don't see you. Take one more year. This year, he's take the first place. Andrea, having that two years off and having those injuries, did you did it affect your confidence coming into competing again after two years off? I, the feeling, the most big feeling after the injury is that uh, I must change my, uh, my mentality of training because I love big weights. <laughs> I love big dead. Dear, yeah. dear. I love big deadlift. Uh, I love, I think that uh, I never train uh, less than uh, two hours and a half in my life. Never. Hang on. Never, ne- never less than two hours. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. And uh, okay. because I, I I love staying training, I love staying gym. Yeah, is the best time I spend my time train. I think is uh, like a dependent of train of uh, of uh, training. And so, but uh, I must change my mind of uh, training. No, uh, nothing uh, good. I'm um, sorry, big weights, uh, but uh, more feeling, hmm. more connection, mind muscle. Less weight, but uh, um, slowly movement, different movement, different uh, uh, stimulation with uh, use also something machine. And before I dumbbell and barbell, stop. Heavy, 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 like a Dorian, because my idol is Dorian. And uh, for me, is a, a an athlete evolution. Have uh, most improvement with... Uh, not uh, less uh, um, work, but different work. 
and I changed my mind because I'm uh, or I, I have another G injury or and I changed my mind. Yeah. Do you take care of his training as well, Mauro? Uh, say again? Sorry, do you, do you take care of Andrea's training or do you let him do his own thing? Uh, basically, I like, yeah, and when you start, okay, first time when I see Andrea and Alize there, he needs like a more, more uh, size and in, 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 uh, thickness on the front legs. Mm. And then also shoulder. He have, when he started cooperating together six years ago, his shoulder was small. Really? And then, yeah. Wow, because I, I was watching the live stream and I couldn't, because like your, I think your, your best part of your physique is your shoulder to waist. I'm trying to think of who's got even equal, like the short, the wide shoulders, the big delts, and then the tiny, tight waist. I'm trying to think. I think Jamie, Jamie, uh, Jamie the Giant has got quite a good shoulder to waist. Hey, you know, hey. the kind of the taper, because it's it really stands out. Because like when you're next to uh, Puerto Rico and you're still next to Shaban, Mahassan Mustafa, Akeem, you know, Akeem's got that good shoulder to waist. It's like your physique really stood out because it's especially in the front lat spread, front of a bicep. I mean, that front of a bicep, the way. You just did the you did the frontal bicep and then you kind of just slowly angled and then your lats just kind of like, just popped out. It looked it just exploded. But it thing is that's your first pose and that's 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 a good first pose to have that frontal bicep and everything just kind of pops, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, exactly because Andrea is very impressive when you start to pose. Mm. And then we're talking about the training there. Yeah. Of course, when you start the cooperation, the final when you when you guys start to understand the planning, what is the best body. The, the sometime Andrea, he need some break. I say, Andrea, don't train too much. <laughs> Does he? But he tell you, I remember when I was with the Kai in San Marino with Gianni Rico Pica, where Kai Green was guest pose. He say, Mauro, come on in the gym. Their Kai start training. Mm. That was three hours. <laughs> three hours. Stretch, wow. little bit cardio, yeah. read the newspaper. <laughs> he, I saw the Kai feel very good stay in the gym and also Andrea. It's the best moment of the day after stress, uh, social, business, training people. Andrea feels good because he's training during a long time. Hmm. When I wake up in the morning, I don't uh, think that is Monday. It's a back day. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like it. Really? 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 Uh, the, 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 there aren't the day of weeks. Uh, are the training of today. Yeah. Wow! But really, it's not. It's not like uh, 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 only words. Is really for me. Is a re real religion for, for me bodybuilding. Mm. So um, I assume you're shutting it down now until the Olympia. Sorry. Sorry. No more shows now until Olympia. No. No. You know. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, because no, I just wonder. Because sometimes you know, athletes sign contracts for multiple shows, and they, no, you know, then no, they're, no. they're, you know, they're doing. They have to do them. You know. Also because uh, the after the week after Olympia there is a, a show in Italy. Yeah, and maybe ah. I want to compete in Italy. San Marino Pro with open open class. There is Olympia and the weekend and the next Great. weekend uh, open show in Italy. And I won't compete in my home. You have to do it. Have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean are Yamamoto happy? Yamamoto, yeah. they happy? Oh, Yamamoto, the, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the big boss called me this morning. I never heard him like that. Oh. <laughs> never, never, never. He's uh, really excited. And uh, I'm in Yamamoto since six years. I'm the oldest testimonial, Yamamoto testimonial. Mm. Not with age, but like uh, when I started, I'm the first. Oh, really? I'm... Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm the first testimonial for Yamamoto. Before Yamamoto, because I'm a Yap store testimonial. Yamamoto born after, and I'm the first Yamamoto testimonial. Wow. I've, I've noticed they really look after their athletes. They keep their athletes for more than just one year. Like some, some companies, they change every year. But Yamamoto really kind of looks after their athletes for, 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 for a lot of years. In my yeah. career, I had one coach, Mauro, and one sponsor, Yamamoto. <laughs> There because the, the boss was very happy Jacques, because he's a last Italian athlete in bodybuilding that the step on stage in Olympia that was in 1993. It's like a 20 years ago, Italian bodybuilder step on stage. There was Mauro Sarni. I don't know if you remember him. I remember Mauro Sarni. Yeah. It looks like my name. He's very nice guys, very beautiful, not extreme big, 
but was very nice athlete. This is the last uh, competitive Olympian Italian, 28 years ago. 93, I remember. Yeah, 93. He won, he won Niagara Falls in America, and yes. then he had an invitation for Olympia. Did he? Because uh, the boss was excited today for to say, Andrea. Ah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Because Italian, the, the company is Italian. Yeah. So the testimony is pressy. That it was perfect. So now it was. It must have been. What was it like for you having three athletes in the show? Because I mean, imagine having just one athlete like Andrea, who's you know is kind of one of the favourites going in. What's that like having multiple athletes? I mean, I know some coaches do, and they find it very stressful. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm 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 a strong mind like a coach because I do a long time ago mm -hmm. this this job and then also I have a ten years my wife because I don't have any emotion okay with Andrea when he take it first place but uh, when you have a three athlete mm -hmm. and then after like in Puerto Rico the one athlete squeeze the legs one athlete don't squeeze the abs <laughs> Tio, Tio start to sweat yeah. Andrea little bit no control the stomach during like a spread out. It's not easy, but finally, my experiences are that give you is a three example like a both to Andrea and Theo is a three completely different body. Andrea don't go less than six hundred and fifteen grams carbs. Six hundred and fifteen gram a carb. That's why you can train for two hours. Yeah, yeah because uh, wow. normally. Uh, with Andrea, type start with Presti, we start to uh, reducing the car and loading. Right. What I tell you when I start the interview, Andrea was great with a high salt, drinking free, nothing misery like uh, 10 gram salt, uh, and then also carb 650, just only carb misery, of course protein, because that the when the body was perfect, don't do change nothing. With the teal. The experience about the judge, what the Bill Sibila in Puerto Rico say, more thin skin and a little bit drier. That yesterday say the same with the hit judge. When I talk with him, he say, Coach, for the Tio, take out take out the water. I say it's not the water problem. Tio is too young. They need more quality. Like Twenty-seven, quality is isn't it? It's not about the water. Water. Tio was perfect for me yesterday. For his condition, of course, he's young. Theo, Theo impressed me. And it's funny because when I saw, if you see pictures of him off stage, he doesn't look like, you see the picture of him in the water, in the Bahamas, he's just stood in the water. And he doesn't look huge. And I was watching the live stream and he's a, he's a big guy. I mean, he really, he's one of yeah. these guys that you really, I, find, I think he's really underrated. I think, because I think, because he's not done any, many, well, apart from that Bahamas show, he hasn't done any shows outside of Europe. He did the British Grand Prix. He did, what was it, Romania, the, uh, the Spain. You know, so he's not really, I don't think, I think he's one to watch. I really do. And I think you're doing a great job with him. And I think he's got, he's got beautiful symmetry. And I was, I was pleased he got uh, top six. Yeah, yeah, no, the tail there, the problem, many bad guys write me, their tail are 212. I say, no, in the real, it's big guys. He's big. Yeah. He's like, he's like big because he's... he have a genetic, he have yeah. a symmetry. And yesterday, this is a one, uh, see, one uh, for to smile, 11.30 in the morning, a tail step on stage at 8 o'clock, you say, coach, can I eat? Why? You are feel good. Okay, your stomach is flat. Is a no, not big belly. Why you eat? You feel good? Okay, stay. If I make it wrong, that you need more food, after the show, you delayed me like a coach. Mm -hmm. Finally, I say, coach, I was perfect. I was feel good. good. And the heat judges say, impressive abs, more control in the belly, symmetry, six pack, and very good posing. Theo will be, will be good, but they need a quality of Presti. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, to be honest, like, I think, um, I think your calling card is, I think, because I think when you hit that most muscular, it's that freaky fullness in the chest and the shoulders and the separation and the detail. Like, like when you hit your side chest, I mean, the striations in the glutes and the hamstrings, it's like it must feel really good when you know you've absolutely nailed it bang on. Because I think when I saw that's when I, I think when I saw the difference between Puerto Rico and um, uh, Portugal is the quads. Your quads in that morning shot, in that hotel room shot, they were so, I mean, they were literally like you've ripped the skin off. Yeah. Remember, remember, sorry, Andrea. Remember in Puerto Rico, the light was very close. Hmm. In Portugal, very high. Okay. It's make a difference, make a more valorization. I don't know if exactly in English, the quality. Hmm. If the light is too close, they make some not perfect, uh, drier, and you see the, the detail. 
in Portugal was the best light, the best. Mm. And also Andrea improved not too much, but little bit in condition. In, in Bahamas was extreme, but in Portugal was unbelievable. I, I don't know the weight because uh, I don't have the scale in Portugal, but uh, I start to home in Wednesday and uh, in uh, the weight is uh, a little bit less than Puerto Rico, than the Bahamas, sorry. Mm. In, I think that uh, the day of competition, I took, took 1.5 or 2 kilo less than, uh, yeah. um, than, uh, than the Bahamas. And uh, I prefer this type of, of condition because uh, my 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 strong point is condition. Yes. And uh, I feel better when I see that uh, I have uh, more striation and my legs is uh, with the deep uh, details. Hmm. Because head judges say to me, Andrea, very good condition, but you need more legs. Mm -hmm. And I told him I have three injuries, blah blah blah. And uh, he said, okay, you need more legs. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't okay. care. You just need more legs. Yeah. Okay. 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 And, uh, but you have really the most extreme condition every time on stage. Yeah. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm proud of this, uh, this type of, uh, of point. In Portugal, I prefer because uh, I see more drier and more conditioned. And also Mauro said me in the morning when you uh, see the photo on the hotel, yep. Mauro told me, Andrea, I never seen you with uh, this condition <laughs> and uh, this muscle because I have uh, so yeah. five, six kilo more, uh, more than two years ago. It, yeah. re it really looked good though. Ooh. I mean, I mean, the thing is when that tan went on and you the carbs went in and the waters pulled out, I mean, when you took that picture, I mean, I would have just given a round of applause. I mean, it just... It was, it was amazing. Uh, yes. Situation are Andrea sent me one o'clock in the morning one video. Yeah. And then don't convince me. You know, I'm not sure. Say one o'clock, Andrea is too drier. And then when I wake up seven o'clock, I send a message, Andrea. I saw the video. Please come in my room. I want to see the body in the real. Yeah. This is a, when you do like a perfect job with the outlet. And then he come in my room because I'm scared if Andrea lose the water, like normally, no diuretic, zero diuretic. Really? I'm sweating to my daughter, believe me. <laughs> this is my daughter. Zero, no diuretic. Diuretic. This is most important, my daughter. Then finally, I saw the legs of Andrea because I'm my, my afraid was Andrea lose the legs if, if I drop water normally without diuretic during the, the sleeping. And say, please come in my room seven o'clock in the morning. I want to check you, and then in the real, not video, not picture. And then I was very happy because Andrea was fuller, drier in the morning. It was the same in the same time, eight o'clock out uh, later, twelve o'clock later. Sorry, twelve because he stepped on stage eight o'clock p.m. It was twelve hour later. And the midsection as well, not just how kind of narrow it is, but how flat and deep your abs are. It really sets the whole physique off really nicely. When, it, when the athlete is very dry, like Andrea in the morning, the only problem is the water. Mm. If you drop water normally, the water go outside of the skin, but outside of the muscle. And every time, how much you drop water in the restroom, you drink in the same quantity, about, not perfect. Mm. It would be because carb is still inside the muscle. When Andrea trained the poser, the muscle said, Poo! like a full, like a full bump during the training. That's a perfect. I don't know if the next show will be the same, but this 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 show was perfect. Mara, what would you say are Andrea's best poses? If you had to pick two. Side chest and double yeah. bicep front. Oh really? Oh I like his um okay. uh, double bicep back, but I tell yeah. Andrea my my side uh, chest is good. Not credit card, like a, a, a business card of bodybuilder for me is a front double biceps. Yes. Everybody is impressive like this. Body classic, man physique uh, uh, is impressive like a muscularity. But bodybuilder for me is a, when you do like a double bicep pose. Mm -hmm. And Andrea improved a lot in that. Because he, I, he still is my, wow, Mauro tell me every time, double bicep bag, big, big, big. And finally he do that. It's like a, it's like a perfect X-frame. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. That Milo said, that Milo sent a message and say, Andrea, you have a more chance for to be 
bigger and bigger and better outlet for the step in the big stage. So what's have you have you had a chance to discuss the game plan for the Olympia yet? Why Andrea? No, they might as well do coach. I'm the side. Uh, You're the coach. <laughs> okay, of course when you are listen or showing the list that your athlete Andrea Presti when you grow with him for the six year that he, wow Andrea ever like a comparison or I don't know call out I don't know but I hope with the Rami with the big name of the the, the, the world of bodybuilding the same condition for me because he's a, the best point of Andrea Try to do better in legs because I have 12 weeks more for to try to improve. Mm. Nothing different extreme, not like uh, 12 kilos more because this is what was one condition with Andrea Presti. I don't want to try something different. Andrea, you put 10 pounds more for to be bigger. No, the judge like that, like this. Try to work with intelligent training, not extreme weight. And then the body will, will reaction because some, sometimes the body don't need to work is a tired this is another question about coaching okay you preparing the plan but if andrea or the body start to be too much tired so he's got a really good it's a good chat it's a good time to qualify for the olympia rather than kind of four weeks out or i mean you can literally i mean are you going to take a week off or two weeks off or are you going or are you just going to cruise in on your prep what are you going to do now I say, Andrea, today, take some rest with a friend, go to eat pizza, <laughs> go around with a girl, you are beautiful eyes, blue eyes, uh, <laughs> alive. and you say, hey, coach, tomorrow what I train? Hey, Andrea, take two days, two days. No, Andrea, it's too strong mind, it's a focus. I'm happy, but sometimes I say, don't be too much sick about bodybuilding. Sometimes leave, mm. because really it is a dangerous, because you are to be sick bodybuilding sometimes but if a result is like that i put a hand up i say andrea okay training yeah andrea but uh, i remember when the first time mauro uh see me with my diary because i have a diary with uh, everything right diet of every competition training of every wow. competition love it love it yeah and the joke to me andrea what do you do your diary like uh like uh like uh i don't remember mauro uh, that, no that that milos learned me mauro when you start to write diary you be one i want to show when pre milos prepare me they use a diary i i have a here that diary. <laughs> brilliant everything. fantastic everything. Milos, training everything everything every day this is a diary when public i look like a dorian every day uh, i i kept one I kept one for several years. I did. I did everything, all my supplement, all my gear, all my every weight Dorian of food times, everything. Also. You got to. Dorian also. Dorian yeah, yeah, also. yeah. You got to. You got to. Do you want to? And yesterday, when I go down off the stage, the first uh, thing that I say to Mauro is, uh, and so Mauro, my diary is okay. Now it's okay. Finally, it's diary. <laughs> So what, what what did you do last night then? What after you after, literally after we finished watching the live stream? What happened? Did he did he go out or do you what did he do? No, it was it's like a, a was lockdown in Portugal. Oh, st oh, is it? Yeah, oh, then we do like a hamburger takeaway in your home in the apartment of Andrea. Everything is closed. Oh no, Uber, Uber we Eats. We walk around <laughs> in a, in a Estoril, but a restaurant, pizzeria, everything junk closed. Oh 11 God. p.m. closed, and the weekend, three, three and a half p.m. in the morning, in the afternoon. Everything shuts. Yeah, yeah. It's a very oh, restriction no. in Portugal. No, oh, the problem. I have a four pass for to come backstage. Four. Yeah, yeah because when you finish category, the example uh, wellness women, the wellness come out and come bikini hmm. for the placing for the distance. No, it was terrible. In the place of um, of a press conference, we can't drink because we can't take off the mask. Oh no! Because I because yeah. I was very surprised to see you on stage wearing masks. I thought that was all done with now. Yeah. That I yeah. said, hey guys, if I, if I problem for the break, that take out of the nose because yeah. you know posing, posing, posing. The guys in two twelve, they're one. You know the guys Rasta from from Brazil, Lucas Coelho. Yeah, he was like. A, 
water, mm -hmm. water, because the mass, just possible oxygen there, you are, yeah. you are, you come down. What, what did you think of the other categories quickly, Mauro, uh, whilst I've got you here? What did you think of the 212 and the classic? What was your quick uh, take on that? Well, it, uh, okay, I saw the guys, because I hear one athlete, Daniel Stiko, is is good, good athlete. He's the first show, he's making eighth place. Oh, wow. I saw the old guys, 212 in backstage, that make me surprised. They are guys, they're one. Oh, I don't, I saw, I said the Rasta, but I remember the name from Brazil. Lucas. Small waist, yeah. quads, huge frame. Incredible. Say, this is one, one, absolutely. When I, and with the other guys, there was third place, Brazilian. Also. Oh, it's, Fabrizio, Fabrizio Merero. Fabrizio. Yeah, very but impressive. A little, little bit cut. Mm. It was huge and bigger of all category. But finally, when I step on stage, the Rasta guy, their skin <laughs> was a little bit deeper. Yeah. And posing to posing going better. You lose a little bit of water. This is a detail, like mm. in my experience. And finally, drier. And then third place was perfect for him. When I started watching the live stream, I didn't see any posing routines. Were they earlier no. or no posing no. routines? Just no, for the time. Probably because, because they, they ever like a rent the casino. It's not possible uh, to stay more. Because the no, placings, they were like eighth, seventh, sixth, fifth, fifth. I was like, whoa, slow down, guys. Because after 11 p.m., the casino must close. Oh, shit. Their, their shed, schedule were, uh, was our five o'clock step on stage, the big guys open. Yeah. And finally, the guys step on stage 7.30. It's like a two hour and 30 minutes later. Right, okay, okay, okay. Because we we'll do like only presentation, comparison, uh, uh, pre presentation, uh, comparison, and call out. Hmm. And we'll, uh, get out, out, home. Okay, final question. Where is the goal and will Andrea be the hardest guy on stage at the Mr. Olympia? I think he could be. Andrea, it's you. Come on. Is that okay, the goal? Please. Is that the, the goal? Is that the, is the goal that you be the most ripped guy on the stage at Olympia? Because I'm telling you what, that could <laughs> that could be achievable. I think. Honestly, well, what do you think? Uh, That's the goal. Come on. Huh. <laughs> it's a big goal, but uh, I try. I try. I try to be the most ripped athlete on the stage. Okay. Because imagine, imagine if like we were, you know, I'm, I'm out there, we're doing the reports and they'll say, okay, who was the most conditioned guy? And I'll say, oh, Andrea Pressi from Italy. Mauro prepped him beautifully. Yeah. He's, you know, he's, he's absolutely shredded. I mean, there's no one who's even come close. His skin is like transparent. You know, he looks absolutely phenomenal. Ma Mauro, Mauro say um, a right thing that uh, is impossible in 12 weeks, uh, growing muscle is yeah. impossible. Yeah. For me, the goal for the Olympia is uh, uh, try to be, Fuller, like uh, maybe like Portugal or, or uh, a little bit more in 12 weeks, uh, but uh, go on stage with the extreme condition that I never, I never uh, been before. Also, finally, Andrea is not small. Like okay, cut, cut, cut. I saw like in one, one video there are people. I don't think I have a many many message in my life in Instagram. Like <laughs> did you? Uh, yeah, and Andrea, when posing, is big, bigger than the picture. Yeah. The picture probably don't give the real because you have a little bit long bones. Like mm -hmm. Milos, remember Milos, when he posed, he said, ah, don't big arms. But Milos in the real, we have a huge and big arms when he was competitor. Because finally, it's not small. I, I, I hope so that Andrea will be good competitor. Nothing more because step on stage is a, like a, one dream. Mm. It's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm really afraid and not excited. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? I always like to get the competitors, whether, whether, whether they're after a show, whether they're either either at the airport or they've still got their tan on. And I've just seen you've still got your tan on your hands. You're still, you're still tanned up. So it's always good to get the winner interview. Okay, well, I don't understand. Sorry, because uh, it's okay. I'm just, I'm just wrapping up. I'm wrapping up, um, okay. guys. Uh, so, what are you doing today, guys? You, uh, what's the plan now? You got home? You're gonna you're gonna go to the gym or restaurant? Uh, Pizza? Andrea, I have a free day. I'm probably you no know, gym now today. No, just sleep in one hour. I sleep one hour. <laughs> oh wow, okay, that's enough. That's enough. I don't. Think I am pressed to sleeping. Don't think so. I don't sleep not no, no, not nothing. <laughs> not one minute. But I I'm like a adrenaline man. I don't. I, <laughs> I, 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 I'm not hungry, I'm not tired, I did really? only, only adrenaline. 
It's incredible. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, that's, that's what a win gives you. That's what a win gives you. All right, then, gentlemen. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on at short notice and uh, really appreciate the winner interview. And, um, yeah, all the best for the uh, the next 12 weeks. I'm just uh, – this has been great. And I'm, I'm, I was so – I was going crazy last night because cause I really I really thought the one and two was going to be you and Vlad, and I was really screaming for you too, you know? So – but um, yeah, fantastic show, um, you know, fantastic condition, huge improvement since 2019. I didn't know about the injury, so that makes it even more impressive. And uh, Mauro, just just keep doing what you're doing, mate, because, um, you know, you're, you're doing great things with your athletes, mate. Keep going. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you for inviting. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And sorry for my bad English, but uh, I promise that I learn better. Sorry for my worse <laughs> Italian. <laughs> 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 All right, then, guys, I'll let you go and uh, I'll speak to you very soon. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you so Thank much. You. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, it is hot news and shout out time for episode 105, MD Glow Muscle, season four, episode 25. Okay, we're going to go to some of the, the biggest news of the week. Uh, I'm going to go to Bodybuilders Without Borders, a very, very popular page, the, <laughs> the ESPN of bodybuilding. <laughs> that's cool yeah basically it's a it's a news page so we're going to go to that as it's easier than rather than pulling up all the instagram accounts individually right okay obviously the big show is the portugal Zhao hates me calling it the portugal pro got to call it the mr big evolution pro but it is commonly referred to as the portugal pro so that's what i'm going to call it <laughs> less of a mouthful sorry yeah well it's a sponsor isn't it so they've got to you got to try and put that in the minds of the people so the sponsors uh, come back next year. <laughs> right, <laughs> basically. Right, okay, who should we go to first? I'll tell you what, I'm going to go to, let's start with maybe classic or 212. 212, where is it? That's classic. Don't see the 212, hang on. I might just completely skipped over it. No, there was no 212 on there. No, okay. Um... Right, okay, I'll tell you what, we'll go with uh, the classic then. I was actually quite surprised uh, Wesley Vissers was in third. Um, very, very, very popular. Being top 10 in the Olympia, he's done Arnold Classics, turned pro in 2018 at the, the March 2 Bro Show, the Royal London Pro. And um, very, very popular bodybuilder, um, huge as well. He's, I bumped into him actually backstage at that show. And because like, that was when the classic hadn't been around that long in the pros and i tell you what i couldn't believe how big he was uh i couldn't believe he was, he was he's sick no but he's big he's a big guy he's big wide i mean he's a big dude and he actually said when he came on globe muscle season two um he said that he does he will eventually go open because he's only what is he 25 26 now i tell you what he's nailed his condition there that's i was yeah that's almost as good as when he won the, the romania a romania pro in the classic at the end of 2019 because his problem yeah, it has he's not really nailed his condition every single time but he has done a couple of times but I, oh look at that look at the separation of the arms there that's impressive i tell you what he looks crisp oh but he's gutted he didn't win but um yeah so great showing there i mean, he's really starting to learn how to peak properly now he looks f- absolutely swollen <laughs> he looks absolutely <laughs> fantastic <laughs> there you go yeah, he's, he kind of models himself with the ball Arnold, doesn't he? Although Arnold never did a side tricep. He used to do the arms out straight. But I tell you what, because I missed the live stream on the Classic. I only watched it for the Open. He looks he looks bloody good there. Uh, I'm really hoping he actually goes and does some more shows because, I mean, he's picked up probably a decent amount of points from, doing, from taking third in this show. But he is a guy we all want to see at the Olympia because, wow, he looks really good. Really good, really good. Now, this is a guy that won... Um, I don't have this guy's name because his Instagram handle is Maidelman. Uh, let's try and get his name. Amazing flow, but is this classic? Well, yeah, he is. <laughs> oh, wingman being tight. Wingman, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a joke. Hey, this kid is good. This guy is very good. I've seen him before, and the name didn't register when I saw the competitor list because obviously I know him as Maidelman and I, I know his physique. But um, I saw his name on the competitor list. We'll, tr- we'll try and bring up the competitor list and see if um, see if we can get his name. I forgot. I, I don't want to guess his name. <laughs> it's a bit pointless, isn't it? Let's put some music on. Yeah. Is that music? Oh, nope. Get that off. <laughs> a rough diesel. Smooth. <laughs> Fire emoji. 
<laughs> he's cool. Yeah, because Ross Diesel's he's uh, second Olympia. He's um he's look he's obviously wants to keep an eye out on these guys because uh, well this guy's going to the Olympia now, so Ruff Diesel will oh, Jose Marie. There you go. Just caught his name there very briefly. So yeah, looks absolutely fantastic. He is going to the Olympia weekend, uh, October seventh through tenth, twenty twenty one. Okay, and there's the top three. Um, do we got, oh we got the names great? Okay. Oh, Je, his name's German, but it's pronounced Ehrman. Uh, so a guy's name is let's go to actually go to his account. His name is e German P German Pasta. So it's it's pronounced Ehrman Pasta. I hope that's right. But um, yeah, I didn't know. I knew nothing about this guy. I knew nothing about him. Let's go back. Let's go back to the. Um, but yeah, so he took second and he beat Wesley. I mean, David Hoffman, a very well-known uh, German uh, classic competitor, has been around for many years, had some very good placings. He was sixth place in this lineup. So um, there we are. Fifth place was Alex. Oh, classic FM. <laughs> Classy FM. Why do, they just, why do they just put their real names? Oh, Fabian Mayer. Yeah, lovely physique, this guy. Look at that. Yeah, he was one of the favourites going in as well. Oh, I've seen this guy before. Yeah. I believe he won the Arnold. I was told two days ago he won the Arnold Ohio Amateur. Um, I be, probably was it last year? Yeah. So twenty-two hours to go. He looks good. Yeah, great physique, nice condition. Uh, what, what was he? Fourth, fifth, fifth. He was now fifth. Yeah. Let's go back. Let's go back. He's got the. Yeah, he's got the bum stiff moustache. Porno moustache. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, cool tattoo that. I don't like tattoos, but when the art's really good and the tattoo's really good, I think it looks very cool. I mean, the thing is, imagine trying to go get a good tattoo and you get something that looks like a, you know, like you see sometimes those Instagram accounts and they say, I, I wanted this. And, and then they peel the thing off and it's, it looks like a, like, like a two-year-old's done it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. Anyway, we digress about tattoos. Yeah, look at the condition. Yeah. Nice dry conditioning. That's almost Presti level conditioning. So Fabian Mayer, fantastic. Uh, come on, go back. Work. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's go back again. And uh, yeah, so that was a classic. Um, fantastic. Oh, this, this, this is the 212. No, that's the open. Sorry, my mistake. This is the open. Um, I'll tell you, we'll come back to the open because I want to cover the 212 because... Um, shit, what's he doing there? Right, yeah, because uh, we, Lucas Coelho from Brazil, uh, I, I'm sure it was his pro debut. I've not seen him before, but I saw lots of pictures in the lead-up. And we've actually mentioned him more than, I think, two or three times now in the Hot News segment because he was just looking so impressive in the run-up. He's actually on one of the other counts. I'll bring it up then. But, um, yeah, Lucas Coelho won the 212. Steve Benthin second, as I predicted. Um, so, yeah, so those guys both delivered. Uh, let's bring up, yeah, actually, let's bring up that video. Let's see, is that the call out? First call out. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. Oh, so gutted. What did he, do you think Vlad should have been second? I reckon he should have been second. Second. I, th I thought he was second. I thought he was second. Um, I had it, I had Presti first. Um, I had Vlad second, and I wouldn't have argued if Vlad had won it. I had Tim Budesheim in third. I had... Theo in fourth. I had William Martins who took third. I had him fifth place purely because um, the lack of back thickness. But I tell you what, he's he's like a Dennis Wolf in the making, that guy. Very similar structure. Um, beautiful side chest was absolutely incredible. Conditioning was amazing. Um, and overall, a very, very exciting newcomer. I think he's, he's Brazilian as well. The Brazilians killed it. They absolutely killed it. I mean, obviously, we had the Mexican pro show as well. Um, I tell you who pressed me, Christian Wolski. We ha we gave him a shout out last week. Um, he turned pro at the 2018 August Two Bros show when he beat Jamie the Giant for the overall. And to be honest, I didn't even have winning the overall. He was kind of just like a, a good balanced physique. But I felt there was a two or three guys in that overall lineup that were better. But he's really come on in leaps and bounds. And he's had a top six, a solid top six place in, in his first pro show. Um, Tim Buttershine. I'm a big fan of Tim's, but I'll be honest, I was from 2017 when I saw him at the San Marino Pro when he turned pro on the, the day before at the Amateur Olympia and then won the, sorry, then took fourth place behind Brandon Curry in third, Hadi Chupin was second and Cedric McMillan in first. 
I did. Um, I was expecting more improvements. I was expecting he looked fantastic. His symmetry is fantastic, um, but he didn't have the wow factor that I think he had in 2017, um, and he wasn't really noticeably improved because um, I, I, he, he competed in 2019. I'm sure, I'm sure he got top six in the New York Pro. Um, it might be 2018, but um, yeah. So he's had a lot of time off. That's my point. And I was expecting kind of, I was expected to come in and completely destroy everyone. But um, he was happy with uh, second place, as you could imagine. Beat some very, very good athletes. I was very shocked with what Theo brought because he, I didn't realize how big he was. I mean, look at him next to, look at him. He, he's re Theo, that's Theo. I mean, he's bigger than Tim. Bigger than all of them, really. Look at the side of his shoulders. <laughs> wow. So... Yeah, so that was a really, really solid top six there. William Martin's there in third. I personally had him fifth. Theo was... What did I just say? <laughs> so Theo was fifth, but I had him fourth. Uh, Vlad was... Sorry, F Vlad was fourth. Uh, Andrea Presti there, the winner. And we had Tim Budesheim in second and Christian Wolski in sixth. So, yeah, really fantastic top six there. And um, obviously, we've had Andrea Presti in this episode, and he is obviously completely over the moon. <laughs> Here we are, is our boy. <laughs> Can you believe this guy has just turned 25 years old? It's phenomenal, isn't it? It's absolutely phenomenal. And he needs to sort his... I'm going to talk to him, actually, because we haven't interviewed him yet for this episode, but um, he needs to sort his posing out. It's sloppy, very sloppy. Yeah, it's too fast, too jerky. He hits too many variations of the same pose. He needs to go watch Doreen Yates, how he used to pose at the pre-judging at Olympia. Just hit the pose nice and slowly, hold the pose. Like Rami did at the Olympia last year. Hit the pose nice and, you know, hit the pose, hold it, and just stick with that variation of that pose. Because I think I think his, his posing cost him one or two placings, to be honest. Because I, I really did. I, I, I was, con I mean, yeah, see? I was convinced he had second or first. I really was. Um... But um, 25 years old. Look at his quads. Look at the quad. Look at the detail and the, the density of this guy's quads. And he's just turned 25 years old. I mean, his potential. I like that shot, that intercostal shot. Because his waistline, look how thick and chunky his abs are. <laughs> See, that shot's good. And then he hits the other most muscular and he, and he shrinks. Look, watch this. Oh, he's not going to do it now. Oh, see, he's pausing. Yeah. Yeah, I just... He's, he's improving He because he uh, Vlad was 13th place in his pro debut at the NPC European last year in Alicante. A few weeks later, he tightened up and then he took second to Regan Grimes at the 20... Uh, sorry, the Romania pro. And he hasn't competed since. So, and he was going all out to win this. He really wants... I, I really, really hope Vlad does more shows because with his second place at Romania and fourth place here, he'll be pretty high up in the point standing. So, I hope he maybe goes to... Is he probably not going to be able to get to Chicago now? Uh, there's Tampa. There's also the Spain show. Um, and Spain, I'm sure Spain is a qualifier for the 2021 Olympia. Um, the, fortunately, the Arnold uh, invites have gone out now for the Columbus. Um, but it's only the winner that qualifies for the 2020 Olympia. Everybody else qualifies for 2022. It was uh, announced earlier this week. So let's have a quick look at Tim show. Yeah, he does look good. It looks good in the video. It was, it was impressive, but I just... I don't know when these guys take time off. I think I just expect them to come back a lot bigger and better, aren't you? He's no, he's very good. He, Tim is very good. Tim's very good. I mean, you've got to see him in the flesh. I mean, he he was right behind Brandon Curry at the 2017 San Marino, and he was only well, he was only like mid twenties then. Yeah, I've seen him sharper from the back. When he, if you look at the 2017 San Marino. The striations here and like the detail around here was shocking. He's actually holding water there. I wonder if he's going to do more shows. Because I tell you what, when you've got in that kind of condition, it can be achieved again. So, yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's a little bit soft, a little bit watery. He's not, he's, I've seen him harder. I think I'd love to see him jump in Tampa. I'd love to see him jump in another show. Because I think he could qualify for the Olympia. Yep. I mean, he's got second place, so he's obviously got a good amount of points. Um, here was William Martins. I was impressed with William. Very impressed, actually. But the the lats are very high, and the back will need work if he really wants to be winning shows like this. And I think he needs thicker legs as well. 
But I tell you what, he is an exciting newcomer. Huge shoulders. This side chest is sensational. Watch this. Look at that. Oh, fantastic. Yep, great detail, great size. I know nothing about this guy. I've never seen him before. I saw a couple of pitches in the lead up of uh, some progress pitches, but he wasn't. Yeah, see, the back is, the back is, it really needs some work there. But I tell you what, when this guy gets a back, he's going to be a force. What do you think? I know, but because yeah, but if you could imagine, because he's got very wide shoulders, he's got that kind of um, he's kind of got the high lats. But he really, if he thickens the back up, what do you think? Yeah, the side chest will be nice. Yeah, the side chest. I mean, the most look at that, the most muscular, are incredible, absolutely incredible. But I tell you what, he's an exciting newcomer. Who's this guy? Who's this guy? Joe Wax, three days out from the Arizona. Oh, three days, three days out before his overall win at the Arizona Open from last weekend. Oh, he's an amateur. Oh, wow, fantastic. Okay, right. Okay, then we'll go to the next account because we need to catch up. Dragging on a bit. Okay, obviously next week the big news is it's the Chicago Pro. Um, Hunter Labrada looking absolutely ridiculously shredded as he always does. Um. How much heck? Because we had Hunter on a few episodes ago. How much heavier did he say he was going to be than over last year? Estimate. Uh, I can't remember. It was a good amount. It was like two, 10 pounds or something, wasn't it? I'm sure he said he was like 245, 247 at the Olympia. And he says fasted he's like 257 or something. So I'd be interested to see. Yeah, he does look good. I mean, obviously he's flat there because it's peak week. So it means he's obviously, de maybe he's depleting here. But um, yeah, his conditioning is, I mean, even six weeks out, his conditioning is absolutely incredible. So uh, one of the favorites going in to the Chicago Pro. Um, I've got to give a shout out to the incredible Rhea Gale. Size <laughs> those medals. Massive. <laughs> Someone kept saying on the MD Instagram, saying the medals look stupid. And it's like, well, I don't think they're going to go out and wear them. Oh, don't say that. Edit that out, please. You're fired. I, I, I have no association with this individual. Yeah, I don't know who designed <laughs> cool. No, I, um, yeah, but I suppose they look good. I mean, if you've got a tiny, I've got medals hanging up from when I competed and they just, they just fade into, but if you've got that on the wall, that's going to stand yeah, out. You've got the red, you've got the white and the black and the gold, where the Olympia medals used to be just black gold. Yeah, but uh, what, if I had one of those, I'd have it put, I'd have it mounted in a frame. Oh, yeah. Because that, that would look really nice on a wall, wouldn't it? Okay, I'd, I I'd have flashing lights on it and all sorts. I'd probably put LEDs behind it like we do on this TV here. I'd be really giving it the big one. But um, I haven't won the Alicante Pro, so I'm never going to get one. <laughs> I've never competed. <laughs> what? Sorry? Oh, sound just went. Hello? Hello? Oh. Oh, don't know what happened there. The sound went. That'd be fine. Anyway, yeah. So, um, yeah, so Rhea Gale... Absolutely incredible. This is her... How many pro wins has she got now? Oh, a lot. She's... Yeah, she's won a few... Because she won Alicante last year. She was ninth in the Olympia. She was... I think she was eighth. I can't... No, I'm sure she's eighth or ninth. She was 13th, then she got eighth or ninth. But anyway, she's moving up. And she moved to Florida at the end of last year. Um, I think it was... I think she stayed out there after the Olympia and she's never come back. And um, oh, i got so much respect for Rhea. Um, I think she's one of our, well, it's, her record speaks for itself, but she's one of our best British athletes right now. Her physique, she's such a, she's such an athlete. The way she trains, she's, she's, she's very impressive. Very impressive. And the thing is, I think her, I think she's going to be like Sean Clarida. She's just going to keep climbing, 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 climbing because she works so hard. I mean, there's a lot of training content on her Instagram. If you go to it, oh, let's click on it now. So, yeah, she preps other athletes. And she's, she, I mean, she's lovely. She's lovely. Put, look at that. I was up for transformation. Holy shit. Oh, Mike's gone again. Hello? Oh, I don't know. Something's happening over the mic. Yeah. Anyway, so. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, look at the lines of her physique. Tell you what, though. Bigger quads. She could do women's physique. I think she'll stay figure. I think she'll stay figure. I don't think she's, I don't think that's. No, nah, yeah, yeah, I think she should stay figure. But um, she's doing absolutely incredible, Rhea. Amazing things. And uh, yeah, we've had her on Global, I think, a couple of times now. She's only got 20,000 followers. See, you can win shows, and if, that's what happens when you don't buy followers. That's how many you have. Not these 
dickheads who buy, you know, they, they win a show and all of a sudden they jump up to a billion followers and you're like, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, and you just think, yeah, whatever, jog on, mate, jog on. That's what uh, Nathan Dash would say, jog on, okay. On your bike. Yeah, on your bike, uh, fella. Uh, okay, oh, oh, see, if you watch the, well, you, of course you've watched the Under Presto interview, you've watched the episode. These are the hotel room shots I was saying, I posted on MD Globe Muscles Instagram, and I just said, yeah, this is the best he's ever been. I think he's probably the the favourite, along with Vlad, to win. Um, I mean, look at the legs. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> look at that conditioning. I mean, that's that looks like he's had the skin ripped off and some protan painted on. I mean, that that really is what you could term as perfect conditioning. Where you, do you I think he could be the best conditioned person at Olympia. You think? Yeah, I think if he got a bit more back detail, I think, I think even if he doesn't say place top six or top ten. He could be labelled the most ripped guy at the Mr. Olympia, like Morgan Asti was at the Arnold Classic last year. Mm. You know, they don't have to get a really good placing to really get people talking about them. So um, I think that would be quite cool if he achieved that. And I think it would certainly raise his profile. But um, yeah, Andrea Presti, unbelievable improvements. And I hope you enjoyed the interview as well early in this episode. Uh, let's give this guy a quick shout out. Um, what's this guy's name? I forgot his name now. Craig, the protein puppy. Uh, Wil Wilkins, Jenkins? Kevin Jordan. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Kevin Jordan. He has been seen for a couple of years. And um, he had some very good placings in pro shows a few years ago. And uh, yeah, so he's doing a comeback. When was the last time he competed? A good two or three years ago now. Who does he look like? <laughs> oh my God, he looks like um, a rival. Um... Come on. What? What are you talking about? He looks like The Rock. Yes, he does. He yes, he does. He yes, he does. He, like he looks like The Rock. I'm going to say it now. Like yeah, okay. 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 I think he is. Shame? Nope, he's the, sh he's the Rock. Bring okay. I'm bringing shame. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay, now I'm going to do a little follow up with Sergio Lima, who we, who we had on last episode of MD Glow Muscle. Um, oh, gutted for Sergio. When he came up by himself, because he competed at the Portugal Pro this weekend, when he came up by himself, I thought he looked fantastic. I thought he looked really good. I didn't. I didn't realise he was actually that good. Um, I thought he had some great shots. His back shots is... Um, he was bigger, heavier than he was in 2019 when I think he was 11th at the Portugal Pro. Um, one of Portugal's best athletes. Um, I don't I, I don't know where he... I don't know what happened. Oh, it's terrible pictures. Uh, there you go. Yeah, he just... He wasn't... He wasn't even... He wasn't even in the second call-out. Um... I thought he looked great. I thought he looked great. I thought he'd be top 10 for sure. But uh, yeah, he's obviously, yeah, he says he's very disappointed about where he placed. Um, shape and condition had improved, but um, he's a work in progress. Um, I think he's, I think he looked great. Great aesthetics. Um, yeah, I just, he obviously must be pretty gutted. I don't know whether he's going to shut it down now and come back next year. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to give Sergio, uh, oh, 2000, come on, mate, get, bump up your uh, social media following. And your content because we need something to follow. Um, but um, yeah, obviously we got some, we gave him some publicity last week. Um, okay, now our next shout out is well, we're going to actually the MD Instagram because um, I had the sad news. I want to mention the sad news: the passing of Jenny Lynn Powell. It's only forty nine years old. Uh, I believe she had a seizure. I double checked that. I read on another um, Instagram page. She was the two-time figure Olympia champion, also won the prestigious figure international, which is the Arnold Classic. She won that three times. Uh, I think she was the first. I think she was the first figure champion, I believe. And um, yeah, she passed away. So 49. I mean, that is absolutely shocking, sad news. And my condolences go to her family and, uh, and her friends. Um, so yeah, I just, like I said, it just the news just came in today and I just want to acknowledge that. But, um, yeah, so sad. So sad. Right, okay, our next shout-out is uh, Brett Wilkin, who we had on last episode, who is about to make his Open Pro debut at the Chicago Pro next weekend, or this weekend by the time you watch this. And he posted these progress pictures, which is one week out. Look at that. I mean, he's just... I tell you what, and he looked good with the Nick, against Nick Walker and Sean Clarida in that guest posing. I just think this guy is, he's going to take some scalps this year. 
I think he's going to do really well. He's going to be first call at Chicago. Um, and I think he's going to be right up there with um, Hunter Labrada and, um, yeah, and the other front runners, uh, Joe Mackey. Um, but um, I'll tell you what, pick a fault on this guy. This guy's, look at his, it reminds me a little bit of Sean Roden that in that everything's just so perfectly balanced and aesthetic. I mean, that's a really pleasing looking physique, isn't it? Beautiful physique. Yeah, tiny waist. And he's 30 pounds heavier than when he did the 212 in 2019. But he originally, 2018, was it Junior USA? He, was, he won the Junior USA as a classic. And then he went uh, to 212 in 2019. And now he's come back 30 pounds heavier. And he's going to be competing at the Chicago Pro. But I tell you, do you think he could beat Hunter? Yeah. I think he could beat Hunter. I think he could. I think he could. Uh, the name? Did you say name? Oh, I thought you said magical name. Because stop. You want to cut that out? All right. None of that. None of that. Uh, using the name to you know the family name, whatever, because that doesn't count when you're up there, mate, on stage in your pants and covered in tan. But uh, <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, look at that. I tell you what. I think he's going to be a fantastic pro. I really do. I think he's going to do really well. I think he's going to be someone we're going to be talking about. Like Nick Walker this year and Hunter Labrada last year. I think he's going to be a big talking point after the Chicago Pro. I'm telling you now. I, re I'm, I will eat my hat if that's not true. You have a hat. I don't have a hat, no, but I'll eat it. Get me one and I'll eat it. I'll microwave it and eat it on the show. <laughs> okay. Right, okay, next shout out is oh we've already we've already kind of done Hunter on one of the other pages. But Hunter Labrada, yes, yeah, so um I mean he has to be the odds on favourite for the Chicago Pro look at the condition of his legs. I mean look at that. <laughs> wow. I mean that's like hang on, how many weeks out is he there? That's impressive. Look at that conditioning. Tell you what, it's not that much smaller than Branch Warren's legs. Because Branch had those big chunky calves as well. Look at that. His legs are incredible. And even at 10 weeks out, Hunter Labrada has shredded quads. I don't know how he does it. But, um, I mean, he's a guy who's been working his ass off. He's a good deadlifter as well. There you are. What was that? Hang on, where's that? Is that five plates for 12 or something? What was he saying there? doesn't say. Yeah. Yeah, he does really good form as well. Look at the bar bending. It's incredible to think that the human body can just like when a, when a metal steel bar will bend from the weight and the tendons and muscles and does that blow you away because it does for me like you, you, come on it must do i mean the fact that steel and tendon oh don't know what the fuck you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> just i can't i can't i can't I properly put i cannot that. put it into words i was waiting for that <laughs> oh, fuck it, what am i talking about right okay there's the shot for hunter there's the money shot Yes, right. Okay. Um, okay, Colleen, can you put? Oh, why? What's America? What's with Americans and guns? It's cool. It's not cool. Until you have I don't. I, I'll be honest. I will say it out now. I'm sure I'm gonna get hate. I don't understand the gun thing in America. I yeah, don't understand it. I don't understand going into and shooting a semi-automatic weapon. I don't understand why you would want to own one. Why you would want to have one in your house. I just don't get it. And I think well. <laughs> okay right okay okay but uh, can you actually insert an alarm noise please right okay no but the thing is the chicago pro i've heard a bit of a rumor i've heard that ruli winkler is doing the chicago pro i've heard no seriously that's what i've heard i've heard from very good source and he is prepping he's getting ready for something now, as you can see, his Instagram is giving nothing away. And I've, I'd just be showing you just stuff that we've all seen before of him training, posing, you know, but there's nothing to indicate that he is going to be competing next weekend. But I've heard, I have heard, this is the late, I mean, this is the latest post he's done. There you go. I mean, that's it. I mean, what he's, he's. He's completely covered up. He's got beautiful teeth, by the way. I think he gets his teeth done by the same guy that did Nathan Dashes. Or as I like to call him, Nathan did Nashes. What? It's delivery. Mate, that's my best, that's my best joke. It's so bad. Yeah, I'm waiting for the drum beat. Well, okay, anyway, let's get back to Ruli. Um, and notice I said it right, Ruli, not Roly. He told me off, didn't he? 
Right, okay. Now, I just think if Rooley brings anything like he brought in 2018 at the Olympia, which we all know he's capable of doing because he's done it before already, or the Arnold Australia look that he brought in 2018, um, Rooley could win Chicago. I mean, he, he, even 90% Rooley's going to win Chicago. I just hope we see, after the disappointment of 2019, 2020, he didn't even get to compete. Well, if Rooley's on, he'll win it. Hunter second, yeah. Brett Wilkins third, Joe Mackey fourth. There you go. I've said it. There you go. It's out there. How can Joe Mackey third? Joe Mackey. You'd have Joe Mackey ahead of Brett Wilkins. Yeah. I think Brett Wilkins is going to shock, mate. I really do. I think he's... I just... I can't pick a fault on him. His flow, his balance. I think it's one of the most pleasing physiques I've seen since Sean Roden. I'm telling you that now. I don't even want to say the words white Sean Roden because I'll get hate for it. But... <laughs> oh, shit. I've said it. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's like he's like a Caucasian version of Sean Roden, the same proportions. I think he's a little bit thicker than Sean Roden as well. Nah. He is. He's a little bit thicker. Nah. He is. He is. Sean Roden's got a beautiful physique. I mean, Christ, he's number four, number fourteen. But um, yeah, new also new Instagram account. I started following on the weekend actually. Horsepower underscore Pro, two hundred quarter of a million followers, it's all in um, Brazilian Spanish. <laughs> okay. But um, the reason I, I want to bring it up, because this guy really impressed me, Fabrizio Marrero, uh, was third place in the 212, behind Steve Benson in second. Oh, yeah, he just does need more conditioning. Because um, Mauro Sassi said uh, he needed more cut. <laughs> he needed more cut. But, um, I mean, there's a guy. Oh, my God, he's, yeah, he's nowhere near in condition, is he? Yeah, I mean, if um, imagine this guy shredded. That would win pretty much any 212 show because he is not missing anything. He's a little tank. He's a freak. Wow. I'm pre- Look at front of a bicep. Look at his arms. Packing some muscle and then guns, man. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Very impressive. Fabrizio Marrero. Let's give him a little shout out on his Instagram page. Um, 129. We did. Hang on a minute. Did we do? We did give him a shout out last week. I think we did. Yes, we did. We did shout him out last week. So we are. We showed this picture here, this one here. So we are already on the case with this guy. Yeah, so he took third. Yeah, because I said his legs looked a bit small, and then I showed another picture, and his leg looked huge. Yeah, no, he did exactly. Yeah, exactly. There's a guy that looks better on Instagram than he does on stage. So either he's using some rather selective filters, or he's doing something in his last few days, uh, carving over, overspilling, or whatever. I don't know. But um, I tell you what, when that guy gets his conditioning right, he is going to be deadly for any 212 show. Um, and if he's if he's coming in watery soft at 212, then that means he's got a bit more room to kind of suck it down and obviously maybe put even some more size. I don't think he needs more size, though. He just needs to get shredded. Imagine him and imagine him in Flex Lewis conditioning or Eduardo Correa conditioning. I mean, look, I mean, that the thing is, that looks like guest posing condition. I'm sorry. Uh, he's gonna be all. He's gonna be all. Yeah, yeah. But I tell you what, maybe he should comp- keep competing. Maybe this is his first of few shows. If he does some more shows, maybe we'll see him at the Olympia, because um, yeah, he needs to needs to up his conditioning game definitely. But um, yeah, and there's obviously William Martin, who we've also we've also mentioned. Yeah, we've already showed that. So yeah, top three, top three Brazilians, absolutely smashing it at the moment. Okay, our next shout out is Joe Mackey. Currently staying at Camp Dennis. Sounds a bit dodgy. Um, <laughs> it's not a diss. <laughs> Just an observation. No, it's um, in reference to uh, staying at Dennis James's house. Uh, being prepped by Chad Nichols. The same team that helped Big Rami to finally get his conditioning right and bring in a package that was completely dominating at the Mr. Olympia last year. Um, we've actually, well, obviously, we had Joe on a few weeks ago, but... Here we go. This is the picture we posted. This is the latest one. Coasting at 75 to 100 gram of carbs a day. That's, yeah, that's low for a big guy that big. That's really low. It's, it's interesting when you think that Andrea Presti didn't go below 600 gram of carbs. That's what you said, 600 gram of carbs. <laughs> so look at that, though. I tell you what, I just, I just hope he... The improvements really translate to how he looked on stage. Like Kind of like Andrea Presti did from 2019 to 21 where they put six kilos on and straight away, as soon as they hit that first pose, you can see that they've really improved. But um, yeah, so I just wanted to give them a little shout out because um, we like to follow up with the athletes we've had on. And um, look at that. Yeah, he's chunky. Yeah. 
Yep. Oh, I'll see train stuff. Yep. So ugh, side chest. Look at that. He's looking good. He's looking good. Uh, so do you think you'll be top five? Third. You think you'll be top th third? Yes. Behind Rulian and Hunter? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Trying to catch you out. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, what about... Like, what? Yeah, his hamstrings are freaky. Right, okay, next shout-out is Danny Castillo. Very, very happy to see Danny Castillo, the women's physique. She won the Arnold Classic in 2017. She won the Toronto Pro in 2018. Top three, she was third at the Olympia in 2018. And then she was fourth place at the Olympia in 2019. That's not really the Mr. Olympia she was in. She was in Miss Olympia, technically. But I don't want to split hairs. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, so she came back and she won the Portugal Pro. Sorry, the Mr. Big Evolution Pro. Um, so, yeah, she's come back with an absolute vengeance. But um, let's have a look at her physique. Amazing physique. I mean, she's won the Arnold Classic. Look at that diet face. Wow. Yeah, very, very good. Yeah, I wonder how she'll do at the Olympia because she's been top three. She's won the Arnold Classic. That makes her really the top five in the world, really. So it'd be interesting to see if she can duplicate a top five conditioning at the Olympia this year and really kind of maintain that level of excellence that she's kind of achieved since 2017, really. So look at the conditioning. The women's physique conditioning is absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, so yeah, I just want to give uh, Danny a little shout out there because it's great to see her back. It must have been very nerve wracking for her coming back. I don't know why she took those two years off, actually. I wonder why she took them off. I wonder, wonder what the reason was. Can't read all that. It's all in Spanish. Yeah, but uh, great to see you back, Danny. Uh, bumped into actually at the Olympia in 2019 um, in the corridor. I said hello. She's nice. Yeah, very, very lovely lady. Right. Okay. Final shout out is the promoter of the Chicago Pro. That is Tim Gardner. Um, yes, yeah, so I just want to give some details because obviously that's that's the next big big show. Chicago Pro, one of the uh, most respected kind of pro events. Really, it has all the categories, every single division. Uh, I sent, actually, the Portugal Pro, in fe Mr. Big Evolution Pro, in fairness, had every single division. Um, had, yeah, every single division. Yeah, so let's... I'll tell you what, I'll give a shout-out to the live stream. Um, because that $39.99, okay, it's a bit more expensive than the Mr. Big Evolution Pro. That was only $14.99. Although you had to pay the PayPal fee on top. So they're trying to got you, they, got, they, they kind of got you on that. It's like 20, end up being like 20 euros, but so it's half the price of this one. But um, Tim Gardner does run extremely, extremely good shows. And this is, this is kind of the big one. This is the one that um, I'd say this, this is probably, apart from the Arnold, probably the biggest show next before the Olympia. So Akeem Williams won it last year. This is when Nick Walker made his pro debut last year, took fourth place. Uh, Justin Rodriguez was second. And I can't remember who's third. <laughs> But uh, Keon Pearson won the 212 here last year. Um, I, I, is Keon doing it, actually? I I, he's, no, he's competing soon. So it'll either be Tampa or Chicago. Maybe he's looking to do win two in a row at the Chicago Pro. So, um, yeah, so I just want to give Tim Gardner a shout out. He runs the... <laughs> look at Tim. How young he is there. <laughs> ah, beefy. And a good physique. Very good physique. So, yeah, so obviously Tim runs the... Tampa Pro, the Chicago Pro. Uh, my mind's gone blank for the other shows he runs. Um, let's go, let's have a look. But yeah, he runs quite, he runs huge, huge shows. Uh, Puerto Rico, of course. Duh. Um, yeah, that was the last show. So imagine imagine trying to organize three pro shows with that many categories in a row. Puerto Rico, Chicago, Tampa. I mean, I can't imagine what his workload must be like. So, um, so yeah, so I just want to give a shout out because obviously, like I said, the Chicago Pro is next weekend. So be sure to check out the live stream. So go to TG Flex and you can get all the live stream details for the Chicago Pro next weekend. Oh, Mike's gone funny again. Oh, oh yeah, sitting on it. Right. Okay, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. This, uh, this Mr. Big Evolution Pro kind of special. Uh, we've got the winner interview there. Fantastic winner interview there with Andrea Presti and his amazing coach, Moro Sassi. And uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this rundown of the, the Portugal Pro. I'm going to call it Portugal Pro now. And uh, yeah, as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. And guys, we are out. <laughs>